Bradbury. I am chair of the Local Liaison Forum and a parish councillor for uh, parish councillor for Coton. Um, we'll crack on with the meeting. Um, we've got a big agenda. So um, before we start it, um, I'm just going to go through um, the purpose of the meeting and code of conduct. Um, so we're here. The purpose of the meeting. We're here to understand. Um, the new information on the proposed corridor, and we have three officers here um, to um, enlighten us further and answer our questions if we want um, them answered. Um, uh, so forum members are here to discuss issues and formulate resolutions to put before the Joint Assembly on Thursday. So this is the primary function of the meeting. Um, it is a public meeting and there will be um, uh, uh, periods when five five minute intervals on each um, agenda item when we will ask the public to express their views but otherwise the purpose of the meeting is for the people around the table to discuss issues and try to reach a collective position on them um, so it's a big agenda again so for each topic there'll be a five minute presentation or a viewpoint of a forum member on some issue um, of the new information then there'll be five minutes of public debate. Um, I will. Um, I, I would like you, please, to keep your comments brief. And if you ramble on, I'm afraid I will um, have to stop you because we've got a lot of um, viewpoints in the room and you know, it's a very short of time. Um, then, be, uh, if if um, appropriate, there'll be a brief response from the officers if we if we want that. Um, and then the, the forum will debate and try to reach a resolution on, it, on each issue. So 20 minutes maximum per topic, and I'm hoping less on most topics. Um, I'm going to be ruthless on timing, as I said, um, so please don't, please don't take offence if I cut you off. Um, so contribution from the public welcome, but please only when invited by the chair and one at once. <laughs> and um, respect and order, please. Um, you know, there's a, there's, uh, feelings are running high um, and, you know, there's a lot of negative um, feelings about these proposals, but let's be um, civilised and let's remember particularly that the officers are doing their job. Right. So, um, the resolutions and responses of June the 14th, um, I, th I've, I've, um, I will circulate after the meeting where you can find them online. Um, unless any members of the forum particularly want, um, want to raise an issue on the responses to last time's resolutions. Um, I'm assuming we are, we are assuming that it's passed and the new information is what we want to discuss, but has anybody got any issue with that? No. Okay. Um, before we go on to the main business of the evening, before we go on to the main business of the evening, a um, bit of housekeeping. Um, Edward, can we approve the minutes from last time? Yes. Okay, I'll sign those off. Um, we have three requests for new members, so we have to decide as a forum whether we want them. Um, they are Rita Langan of the um, Cranmer Road Residents Association. Um, Lynn Hyatt of Smarter Cambridge Transport and um, Harriet Gillett of the Stories Way Residents Association. Do any members have any issues with any of those? <coughs> okay, then we will invite them as members. It's really irritating. <laughs> Um, four on the agenda is a busway what people want. I think um, it's useful for us at this stage to have a general discussion on if, if that's the um, uh, what we see um, will work going forward. Um, I will um, 
I'll ask members to comment on that um, first, then I'll throw it over to the floor, and then we can have a look at the, uh, the draft resolution that's been produced. So have any members got any um, comments to make on, is a busway what do people want? Could you please um, say your name um, before you make a comment? Thank you. Hello. Um, Bridget Smith, South Council District Council. I'm the member for Gambling Gay. Um, my, one, of my cons- thank you. one of my concerns is about not so much wanted, but need, you know, whether there's the evidence that there'll actually be the buses to travel on it, because currently the only bus travelling that route regularly is the X5, and I don't feel, as I, I'm an I'm assembly member, um, representing South Cam, so I don't feel that I've had satisfactory answers to my questions about what the actual use is going to be. I keep being told that make a busway and buses will miraculously appear, so I'm worried about the evidence base that actually the buses will, will be there, and I'm worried that these buses are actually going to serve the people along, the people who are suffering the damage of having um, a busway laid past their, uh, their village, villages. So I think there's two issues there. I mean, Helen, do you want me to um, talk about the resolution that yes. I sent you earlier? So I'd like to propose a resolution under this, please. There's also, of course, the issue of the funding and um, the £140 million um, that's been identified as the cost of this. There's not actually all that money available in the uh, phase one uh, funding for this. So, so I suspect there is a risk that um, part of it will be done and the money won't be forthcoming for the rest of it. Um, so I'd like to propose a resolution that says the A428 LLF ask the Greater Cambridge City Deal Executive Board to um, remove the whole of the A428 busway project from phase one into phase two in order to give sufficient time for a full assessment to be made of the success or otherwise of the current congestion tackling strategy, especially in relation to the points at which a busway will join the current road network. So I'm very keen that all the measures that are being current, that are about to be trialled for tackling uh, congestion in Cambridge City are given an opportunity to work or not to work before we actually start laying swathes of concrete through very, very sensitive parts of South Cambridgeshire. So I think this is a premature project, and I think we should see what the impact is of congestion chart, of tackling congestion before we even consider doing this. Any more views of members? Hello. Um, I'd like to say I agree very much with what you have to say. Um, why do everything at once? Why not see what these congestion tackling measures will do? Um, and, and once we lose the Westfields, once we lose all that green land, it's gone. It's gone forever. We can't get it back. And it's, it's, it's inherently part of Cambridge. It's part of its character. So I would very much agree with what you're, what you're saying, what you're proposing is. Anybody? I'm going to disagree. Can you say your name, please? Sorry, Sorry. Councillor Nick Wright, uh, Pat from Ellsworth. I, I can understand uh, Councillor Smith saying that, you know, it isn't necessary, but I have to tell her the A428 corridor, particularly around Maddingley Hill, is severely congested every day, sometimes twice a day, uh, at the moment. And although the packages that are, you know, part of the complete package for Cambridge, tackling congestion, uh, are coming on together, this is an absolute essential part to tackle congestion for those getting in from the villages on uh, the A428 corridor, as it is now. It, It is necessary. It's necessary now. That's before you even look at Bourne Airfield being started, should that be approved by the inspector. West, um, West Camborne, should that be improved by the planning committee very soon? Uh, that's 7,500 houses added to this route. You know, it is absolutely necessary. It takes a long time to build a busway planning. You know, this is some time away, but you know, we have to be considering it as part of phase one. Thank you. 
I agree with you, and I'd like to build on what you've just said. Um, the heavy traffic on Nadingdy Hill uh, is obviously controlled by the traffic lights at the bottom of Nadingdy Hill. Um, that, those traffic lights also cause a build-up of traffic on the M11, people trying to get off the M11 at Junction 13. Um, that, that produces a situation where traffic builds up um, on, the, uh, uh, on, on the pullover lane on the M11 and it goes back at rush hour a long way. I use it quite frequently and it is dangerous and that danger must be addressed. Um, Rod Cantrell, City Councillor for Neenham. Um, I support this resolution actually and I support it on the basis of um, I have yet to be convinced that the proposals will actually be funded for the second phase of the project. And so one of my biggest concerns is actually we will have a phase one which will not be completed um, in terms of a phase two. And that will give us a park and ride at the top of Manly Rise. It will not achieve the broader economic um, viability goals that the project seeks to achieve. But at the same time, it will destroy a very precious environment on the western side of the city. So I think there are other resolutions that are coming forward this evening, Chair, to explore how we address some of the traffic congestion on the 428, such as the Girton um, interchange. And I think that's something we should also explore in parallel with other um, options prior to actually moving forward with this project. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to the floor for five minutes. So, could you put your hand up and... Um... <coughs> right, does anyone right, want to... Right, tap in the green. My name is Paul Ceylon. I'm the chairman of Ellsworth Parish Council. Um, to pick up on the first speaker's point, the, the question here is, what is the evidence that removing the buses from Maddingley Hill, and there are precious few buses coming in that route, uh, will in fact uh, resolve the congestion which takes place on it? And what research has been done? I, mean, I think the elephant in the room is the strategic failure to make the Girton interchange an always interchange, which is throwing traffic off the A428 down Maddingly Hill. So, I, I'm sorry, we, could we add to the draft resolution that it's a deferral not simply to um, wait and see what the congestion uh, strategy will do, but also the research into the need for the busway, what it will, what effect it will have, and in particular how it will tie in with the other strategy, which is this western orbital route of which we know little. Thank you, Carolyn. Will you get? Will you pass it round? Thank you. Anyone else want to? Right. Just pass it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my name is John Henderson. I'd just like to say I support the uh, draft resolution and uh, I did read in the documentation that uh, most of the busway schemes have a very low benefit to cost ratio. I think the one that's being recommended has a uh, benefit to cost ratio of 0.2 which is about one tenth of what the Department for Transport require for uh, support. The reasons for this are explained. Uh, buses are not very popular because they're very slow and the cost in relation is very high. So I'm looking with interest at the proposals by the uh, Cambridge Connect group which uh, were on the table tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other members 
have anything to say. So we do. Yes, yeah, so I'd yeah. just like to say something. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, Bev Edwards, uh, Barton Parish Council. Um, as it was originally explained to me, the reason for having a busway to get people from Camborne and Bourne into Cambridge is purely so that the local housing plan can be approved. The inspector objected to the housing plan, and one of the main reasons for that was that there's no way of getting this large number of people into Cambridge. So if we defer a busway, and I'm very concerned about the route, but if we defer a busway altogether, then maybe we're deferring the approval of the local housing plan, uh, which means that the current um, rather chaotic situation will continue. Um, our green belt will get built all over because um, uh, most uh, planning appeals will succeed. Yeah. So that's my main concern uh, in postponing this uh, particular project. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? And do we want to add the, um, the additions about the Gerson interchange onto the resolution? Can we vote on that, please? Do we want to, before we vote on the main resolution, do we want to vote on the on putting an amendment in? Yeah, there, there's another resolution coming forward on the Gerton interchange. That <coughs> um, yeah. um, yes, there is. Yes, there is. With me. Okay. So should we just reference? Should we just vote? Uh, yeah. Well, we could mm -hmm. just reference the mm -hmm. other resolution. Yeah. So we'll reference the um, the the resolution of Robin Palou using the Gerton Interchange to facilitate rapid bus transport on Maddingley Hill. Okay. Well, should we vote on that then? How many members do we have today? Can I just see? <laughs> so, one, two, three, 16, 17. 17, okay. Okay, um, all in favour of this resolution? Can you count? Is anybody counting? Can somebody count? <laughs> Fourteen in favour. How many against? Thank you. Can we move on to, um, we're going to divide the route <coughs> into um, three bits. And the first bit is from Muddingley Marsh Roundabout to Grange Road. Um, uh, I'm going to invite Rod Cantrell, City Councillor for Newnham, to come forward please and make an uh, overall assessment and response. At, uh, Yeah. Sorry, I'm not going to do that next. Ashley. I'm going to ask Ashley to come and do his presentation. <coughs> so this is Ashley Heller, um, head of the A428 scheme. Yeah. Okay. Um, But even if you're wrong, uh, we're, uh, as Heather said, we're from the County Council. My name's Ashley Heller, this is my colleague Adrian Shepherd. Uh, we'll obviously briefly, very briefly, go through the background to where we've got to and then just discuss how we would uh, seek to take the scheme forward. I know that's very, very, I'm going to run through this at 100 miles an hour, but we will make this available on the website, so if anyone wants to come back to the presentation. Some of you may have seen this before anyway. Um, so City Deal is about, really about supporting economic growth um, in a sustainable way. You can all see that there's a number of big figures there in terms of Cambridge, jobs growth, uh, housing growth, population growth. Um, and if we don't do anything, then uh, there's going to be a problem because Cambridge already is, is congested. 
there is a transport vision within which this project sits. I mean, it's a much bigger vision and it, and it really focuses around this idea of linking up the different parts of Cambridge with high quality public transport routes. Uh, and the key thing here is about quality because if we are going to change the perception around public transport, there needs to be a qualitative leap. And obviously things like the busway are, are examples of where you can get qualitative leaps. This is, all, this is all very much found in local policy. And one thing I always like to stress is that um, this scheme doesn't come out of the sky. It comes out of local policy because local policy was very much about improving the corridor in terms of public transport links for um, a number of years. And in fact, it's an embedded part of the local transport plan, which is obviously the expression of the highest expression of local transport policy. The local plan was mentioned as well. And obviously, the local plan is very much about uh, looking at how at least uh, the housing growth in the area, which of course is mandated from central government, is catered for in, in a sustainable way. Um, and that's a key thing to bear in mind when we talk about this project. Um, yeah, of course, local policy also says other things, and, and that's a key thing as well to consider that this is not just about building a transport link, it's about um, environmental quality, it's about uh, looking at the wider quality of life aspects, looking at providing extra choice for people in terms of the way that they move around. So it's very much grounded in local policy. So as people have alluded to in the earlier comments, there are congestion problems already on the corridor. Uh, as, we, as we can say that there are up to 18 minutes, uh, delays up to 18 minutes travelling to Cambridge in the morning peak along Maddingley Hill. So that's 18 minutes along Maddingley Hill. Uh, a significant amount of flow as, as, as vehicles come off between the 11, uh, M11 junction and Maddingley Road Park and Ride. Again, that's another key consideration when we talk about other sorts of solutions. Um, the A428 uh, between Caxton and St Neots is very, very busy yeah, in the morning peak um, as well. And up to 80% of the route is currently experiencing queuing. And as again was alluded to, uh, there is future development planned. So uh, I don't need to repeat the figures, I'm sure many of you will be aware of them. Uh, if we do nothing, so what's going to happen on the corridor? We're going to have additional queuing uh, on Maddenley Road. And what will also happen is, is that as that queuing grows, it will, the, it will obviously spread into different parallel corridors. And apart from that, it will also begin to uh, be a much longer period. So, of course, what the modelling is suggesting is that the queuing will also increase in the interpeak period. So you begin to get a picture of uh, a corridor that is going to be congested a lot, uh, quite a long period of the day. So this scheme is about high quality public transport and it's about the city deal vision and supporting the local plans. It's also about supporting local policy and all these local policies are available. These are policies that have been adopted by the uh, various councils within the area. So of course it's important to remember that high quality bus priority was a local policy objective. Where we are in the process, again, this is really important for people to, um, to understand. We're still at an early stage in this process. What we're asking for permission from the City Deal Executive Board next month is, for, uh, is to go out and to, is to basically look into a full detailed al alignment for uh, an option. And at the moment, as you know, we've only identified corridors. And the point being is that investigation into that detailed alignment will be extensive, and my colleague Adrian will talk about that in a minute. So the key thing about tonight is we don't have any of these lines. There are many lines that could be drawn within that corridor and our job at uh, the next stage of work is to identify what line we're going to pursue. We did have a lot of consultation. Again, I think the key message from the consultation is that yes, there are uh, absolutely people that believe that we need to improve transport on the corridor. Yes, there are people that experience problems on the corridor. Yes, there are people that want to see significant cycling improvements on the corridor. But yes, as well, there are, is a significant um, opposition or concern to uh, environmental, uh, any potential environmental effects that building new infrastructure away from the highway may have. So we understand that message uh, very clearly. I won't go through these, lots of alternative proposals were looked at, um, and I'm sure that some of these will come out in the debate, so we can uh, touch on these later. Again, this is about strategy, it's about getting the right strategic decision, and then it's about the detail. Um, you know, and the logic of that is, is that you don't look at the detail before you've chosen what the right strategic decision is. 
What we did is we modelled some different options, high, medium, low, and again, high was relative to the policy objectives around the corridor, so the key point here is the high option was about segregation for public transport, because at the end of the day, segregation will be the only way that you can ensure that buses can get through in a reliable, consistent manner. And what people have told us is what they're looking for is fast, frequent, and reliable transport services, and I, I, I would imagine that every single person in this room, when they decide how they're going to travel, that's what they want, fast, frequent, and reliable. So the recommended option we'll talk about later, and also a recommended park and ride site, uh, which is just to the south of Maddingley Hill, in a location which best meets the objectives of the scheme in terms of ease and access and uh, priority. And so in summary, this option is about wider economic benefits, significant amount of economic benefits that have been uh, looked at in this segregated option. It's about improving- a mistake there. You're saying 141,000, it should be 141 million actually. Yeah, so there's three, obviously there's three uh, zeros missing on that. Faster journey times. And very much, uh, it's about very much just supporting the strategic vision of the city deal. It's significantly extra capacity to deal for growth, uh, to deal with growth. Again, I, I wouldn't focus particularly on the figures in terms of the number of buses that could use it, but the point being is that it's a long-term investment <coughs> and it offers an opportunity for further buses should that be needed. It's a flexible solution because buses are able to go from different points along the corridor and join these, the segregated route at different points. Um, and the key thing is it provides reliability, uh, and reliability is an absolutely essential factor. The key thing to emphasise, because people have asked, it is a two-way busway, so it goes in both directions, as you can see. And it also has a high quality cycling provision um, adjacent to the segregated busway, um, similar to what you may well find in the existing bu guided busway. So now I'm going to hand over to Adrian, who will talk very briefly about the detail of the proposals and the next steps. Can, sorry, can I just ask a couple of questions at that, that point? Is that okay? Um, right, two things. Uh, just in relation to the park and ride site, um, since I've spent a happy weekend reading the 130 eight pages of the papers for next week's assembly meeting. I wasn't aware, and I, I probably missed it, that site three was a, had been um, selected as the preferred site for the park and ride. I've got it on page 34 here, three options, and no indication that I can see that one's been preferred over any other at this stage? It is in the uh, first page of the recommendations. Oh, it says page three there. Oh, God, that's so much. Okay. All right. Okay. It should be on page is it? Okay, New right. park and ride at location three. Um, okay, well, my apologies for that. Um, the other thing was, when you were talking about where the uh, bottlenecks are, you referenced the um, congestion that you get between Cats and Gibbet and St Neots. Now, the upgrade of that bit of the 428 isn't part of this project, so how do you um, envisage that the proposals are going to improve the congestion from Cats and Gibbet to St Neots, since it's something you've referenced here? So obviously the, the A428 is, a, is quite a big strategic corridor and uh, people, some people using it will not be heading into Cambridge or they will be accessing uh, wider destinations, the A14 and, and, and the like. So, it, it, so they obviously those people won't necessarily uh, be impacted directly by these proposals but for people using the corridor what the opportunity will be is that there will be a new park and ride site which will intercept those that are we are seeking to go into the, town, into the city centre which obviously then means that we can reduce the, the potential traffic growth for the area going beyond the park and ride. So that's the key benefit for those people. And it is actually a very good point, of course, that all of the, the statistics that we've thrown at you in terms of number of housing, there is potentially a further impact in terms of the A428 Jordan, because it will make it easier to get into the Cambridge area from much further afield. So it's a further consideration in terms of this particular corridor uh, having further stress on it in terms of traffic impacts. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Adrian Shepherd. I'm very briefly going to go through this uh, route to get you know, <coughs> We've already used about five minutes off. So, what I wanted to do is just point out the salient points of the route. So, you can see them there on the diagram. So, we've got this sort of to the west, we've got the area around uh, Camborne and Bourne Airfield. Um, in Camborne itself, then, we're looking at some discrete proposals for uh, measures 
that increased the um, priority in and around the town itself. And through Bourne Airfield, in accordance with the policy, we're looking to deliver a segregated uh, rapid transit system, busway type arrangement. Then coming out of there, you can see there's the, the, the existing old St. Neards Road, which the recommend suggests is the first place to look for potential segregated route alignment. And that picks up on very much the similar route to the City 4. Um, the area to the south, which is pretty difficult to see on this patch. You can look at the map here, or the one at the back, which is the yellow area. That's the segregated route, which would be considered if um, the same benefits can't be achieved by reusing the St. Neots Road. Then the key location that we just discussed is the park and ride site at Maddingley Mulch. And the reason for a park and ride site to the south of that roundabout is because that obviously best fits with the southern alignment. In going forward in the catchment here you can see the alignment would, would then have to work its way down the side of um, the hill, running the hill towards Coton and the constraints of Coton obviously people's residential back gardens to the south and back gardens to the north, those backing off Manly Rise, Manly Hill. <coughs> then the first sort of crossing point is Cambridge Road and then through onto the nursery and through the nursery. The next constraint is crossing the M11 and there's a, a number of places that can be achieved. And again, they're reflected in the catchment plan, but effectively it's the embankment area effectively. And then crossing over into the development that's called Cambridge <coughs> West. From Cambridge West, <coughs> the system would then move across eastwards over the West Fields um, connecting obviously with the development of Cambridge West and then there's four potential places that the scheme can then connect with the existing highway um, and they are Adams Road, Hirshwood Road, the Rugby Club and Cranmer Road. So that area is described or shown is indicative of where the, the, the work, the, the transport works would actually sit potentially as part of the next stage, we will go forward to look at particular alignments and then look how they, in terms of all the potential impacts, not least transport, but also in terms of environmental property and everything else, how they uh, stack up, if you will, against each other. And that would then form part of the next consultation next year is to compare and contrast those to find out, determine which is the best alignment that sits within the overall business plan. So just one question, you know you said they go over the West Fields, but in the original document you sent to Household, or your short document, you said that Charles Babbage Road was actually a preferred option. And we don't call the West Cambridge site the West Fields, we're not that purist about it. The West Fields are the fields south of the Coton Corridor. So could, was that just a slip of the tongue? Or was that as your fraud? No, no, slip it's or the, the just... To be absolutely clear, it goes over the West Fields, and we can see on this plan, and others may have different interpretations of what the West Field is, but it's the, the area land here that's south of the West Cambridge development and encompasses, for example, the playing fields, the practice rugby grounds you can see on the plan there, if you look at that. And then there's this catchment area that covers some of the fields which are currently just been used for wheat crops. Yeah, but sorry, sorry, if, if, you could, if you've said in all your meetings, that the road can potentially exit on Adams Road, or it can exit on Herschel Road or whatever, then I don't quite understand why you're saying that it will cross the way you're showing, because I thought it could cross the entire red zone up there, the entire catchment. If, if one were to draw, let's just take a, a section that you're dealing with, we were to put between the two points on the M11 and draw straight lines to each of these points, then it would intersect through the area of the stain red, hence it's stain red. That's the catchment area. Stephen, can we deal with this later, please? Um, so, <laughs> got last one, let's move on. So, effectively, the part of that lease considerations are the environmental considerations. With Maddenley Rise as a whole on the hill, one of the biggest impacts is going to be the visual, potential for visual impact uh, in terms of environmental impacts. And that's one of the key ones that will need to be considered as how one can get an alignment down through the catchment area 
in the same way as the Westfields with the minimising of environmental impacts in terms of landscape, ecology and uh, environment. There's a number of uh, assessments to be made. The initial ones are in the paperwork that you've seen as the background to the paperwork that's on the internet. Uh, at this stage, the very high level, they talk about monetizing impacts. Towards the next stage, we start to look at them in more detail. So for example, in terms of ecology, we'll start to do what's called phase one walkover surveys, which is start to assess the information. And in some cases, people have uh, provided to us already, such as Stephen and his group. That's just a little bit more clarification on that Westfield. It's simply a, a blow up of that area and the nursery on the western side of the M11. Um, this I just put in as an example of some of the constraints that the busway had to work its way through, uh, which is a number of uh, nature county nature reserves, wildlife sites, uh, conservation areas. For example, we're in a conservation area now. So these are examples of all the sort of things that need to be considered, assessed and measured in terms of their impact going forward to demonstrate whether it's an adverse impact or not, <coughs> and what mitigation or avoidance measures need to be put in place. And again, this is an example of St. Ives Park and Ride in its early, once it was first opened, with the landscape again. The landscape in there is akin to the area, which is obviously a lakeside area, clearly manly, bright, uh, manly park and ride at Madeleine Munch around about would be a different sort of character with on the side of the hillside and with the Madeleine woods sitting behind it. So there again the sort of things that have to be considered in terms of how to assess it and how to provide for it in terms of mitigation. Um, next steps are moving forward as I say and sort of the key one there moving forward is obviously what happens this October and moving forward to next May would be another consultation and that would be literally looking at potentially different alignments within the catchment area and, and explaining to people the relative pros and cons of those to get people's opinions of that and then from that continuing work on the outline business case to present that including things like revised BCRs and um, general value added wider economic benefits costs obviously and benefit optimization will all go back to the um, the board in the end of 2017. Thank you. Okay I'm going to throw that open to comments from the uh, public. Five minutes of them. My name is Alistair Bridget. Um and I live next door to the proposed three sites. Um, as for the consultation, I've had none whatsoever. Um, just one question, really. If you're going to use this proposed three site, how does the public that wishing to use the public <coughs> ride access the site? That's from the main road as is now. So that's more traffic, the bulk of the traffic, which is the morning traffic, turning right across the up lane, if you like. Well, there's a, a number of pieces of work very high level at the moment because of where we are in the business case, but the engineers have looked at that and they're happy that there's a proof of concept in terms of uh, realigning highways, etc., to get cars into the park and ride and obviously the buses to fly. So it's actually going to have to cross the flow to get in there. The, okay, the other point I wanted to make was originally the site was going to be on the university site. The, uh, there was three before the island. Three which site. would make a lot more sense. Yeah, you're quite right. There's three uh, sites that were put forward at the consultation phase this time each last year. Uh, the central one in the middle and the other one, one and two, are both on university land. They uh, best fit with the solutions that went to the north. We're recommending the southern route, and therefore the southern route sits back best with location three, hence it's in the recommendation. Right, okay. Just for fun reasons. I'm sorry. I'm just. Yeah, I'm his wife, sorry. I was just wondering um, about why you suggested the site next door to us. Because, you know, listening to what you said earlier, 
you're, you're making these plans for all the people that live in Campbell, and so surely you should be putting a park and ride somewhere near Campbell. So the, the reason you're for bringing all those people down to Maddingley Road again. So the reason for proposing the park and ride at the location around Manly Mulch um, Island roundabout was because that's the point as of now where congestion starts. So the experience is that with park and rise, the idea is to intercept the drivers before they get in. They're more likely to use the scheme if they access it before they hit the congestion. So the idea is it's before the congestion. Um, okay, I, I, I travel every morning and it's, it's, it's that up down the A428, down the roundabout, all around Mattingly, they're cutting through everywhere. The other thing is, sorry, the, the, I, I, I'd like somebody else to have a go at Thank you. My name is Stuart Sadler and we are the landowners of Cromley Farm. Can I ask for clarification? We keep calling, I think it's at site three, Maddingley Mulch, where in fact it is not Maddingley Mulch, it is Cromley Farm, my family farm. Yeah. So can we just clarify, are we putting a park and ride on Maddingley Mulch or the field which is next to Maddingley Mulch, which is Cromley Farm? Yeah, the reason that it's been referred to consistently as uh, in the vicinity of Maddingley Milk Roundabout is to allow people to understand where it is. Obviously, yes, I fully recognise that that is your land. So from now on, can we please refer this to Cromley Farm and not Maddingley Mulch? Makes a big difference. Anyone? To us, it does. Yeah, can I just ask a question um, regarding the bus... Um, the bus um, operations and Martin Thompson, Newnham <coughs> resident. Um, I, I imagine there is no representative of Stagecoach here, am I right? Well, you may ask why. Anyway, but um, I would like to ask the um, City Deal and uh, the County Council how they intend to ensure that the bus, bus operators give a service <coughs> that will actually benefit the members of the um, residents of Camborne and actually do the job, because Stagecoach, as we all know, has a very poor reputation. Thank you. We'll just respond to that. Can, I have, a, can I have a question and answer to it? Yes. Another microphone. Okay. Um, you, well, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So I'm Bob Mingus, I'm Service Director for Strategy Development of the County Council. Um, in answer to your question, um, you have to look at the existing busway and the way Stagecoach had invested in that. Um, they bought 25 vehicles at the start of it and around 40. Um, so we're very confident, exactly the same issue we raised about the existing busway, that would be a white elephant, there'd be no buses on it. We put in place a minimum service level agreement with the bus operators, not just Stagecoach, also with it, who are now owned by an Australian company. Um, and we put in place minimum service agreements for them. The service has always been more than that minimum service agreement and it's growing and growing and growing and they just stage which we just bought more new buses for the busway. So we're confident if we get this right, get the right busway, get the priorities in place, that the buses will be there. I'm going to take two more questions. Uh, you used the expression consultation. I'd like to understand, first of all, whether it is a consultation or whether it is just an information uh, delivery on, on this whole programme. The city of is obviously not a democratic body itself. First answer? I'll, I'll do with that. With that. Um, the right. second one, as I'm a resident of Adams Road, um, I notice all the buses stop in Grange Road. Where are you putting all the buses once they get to Grange Road? Mm -hmm. Um, the first point, obviously, uh, as, as actually pointed out, what the City of Board are doing, and there are, you all know the structure of the City of Board as representatives on it, I hope you do, from uh, County, City and South Cambridgeshire. Um, university. Uh, university doesn't have a vote. The City of Board doesn't have a vote. Um, um, uh, but the policies that are actually set up there, the local plans adopted by City, Cambridge City Council, South Camp Local Plan by South Camp Local uh, uh, District Council, uh, Local Transport Plan and the Joint Transport Strategy by the County Council. So there's been democratic buying to all these strategies. What we're now doing is delivering those strategies. And that's been done in the auspices of the, of the City Deal Board. So, is, so is, there, is this a consultation 
on the city deal plus way, or is it a information delivery? Well, there's been a consultation, <laughs> in yeah. which we've... Uh, what are we doing now? Are we consulting, or are you different? The next stage will be to consult on specific routes, subject to the assembly of board decisions, uh, in the next week and the next month. So, i.e. the public isn't actually going to have any say currently? Um, I think the danger is you're confusing a consultation with a referendum. It's not a referendum. We've asked people their views. We've had a range of views back in. There are any issues raised with us that we need to address and deal with. We've had very vague information today. Well, they, you're getting down to the details. We, we, we have the ability to influence this, or are we just being informed? The next stage of the process will be a, a number of routes. As, as Adrian outlined, there are multiple options. Can you answer the question, please? Can I explain the process to the gentleman? No. You? I'm I'm explain the process. The question, and you, I'm not answering it, you're evading it. You're talking about your roots. He's asking a question about the consultation process. Which is about what, what the next stage of consultation is. It's not about is. the roots, it's about consultation. Please answer the question. The next stage will be to consult on those roots. Um, we will put forward, we may, we may recommend one route, we may advise on two routes, we don't know yet, they haven't done the work exactly what we'll be putting forward at that consultation stage. That will then allow people to come in, uh, 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 get views on the different routes, how they impact them, how they see them fitting into the overall vision, and then it'll go back to the board again for them to make a decision. Again, it won't be a referendum, it'll be a consultation. We ask the people's views, the board will have to make a strategic decision. If they then go forward to the next stage, there will be a full formal consultation in which people can make formal objections. And that will probably be some form of public inquiry depending on which statutory process is appropriate. And there's a number of what options go forward. So there's several more stages that people can express a view uh, on which decisions, the decisions will be taken. I hope that's clear. It's not just black and white, it's, it's just gentlemen and things. And sorry, the second part of my question, is anybody able to answer that? Um, I think we're going to move on now. There's, there's, there's several members that want to have um, um, uh, a word. Uh, um, actually, I just want to say something. I, as, director, as, uh, as director to of Coton Parish Council, I heard this um, this view last week that it's not a referendum um, when I went to, to the stakeholder um, briefing. And um, I was told by a leading um, city councillor that um, it wasn't a referendum and, and we don't have to take the opinions of the general public into consideration um, if they're proven to be wrong. So my question would be, are the general public wrong in this case because you have ignored the opinions of thousands of people and you have dismissed the additional suggestions, I think virtually every single additional suggestion that was made. So what was the point of the consultation? Um, I think that's really a political point. I'm not a politician, I'm an officer. Uh, as officers, we're given a very clear uh, job to do, and that's to deliver the strategy. Uh, and we've advised members on how best to deliver the strategy. It's the member of the decision whether they listen to us or listen to other people. But how much weighting does the views of the general public have, the people who live in an area? Because we listen to all these um, justifications of the route that's been chosen, and it's in terms of um, you know, journey times and it's uh, you know avoidance of some environmental uh, environment, uh, environmentally sensitive sites, but not all. Um, and actually, ju there just doesn't seem to be any consideration for communities that have been here for hundreds of years and people living here now. And this is my big issue with it. What weighting does any of this have in the process? I think that weighting, that's where the politics comes in. The weighting given, we're, we're given a, te a, like a technical job to do, deliver the county councils, city councils and South Cambridgeshire district councils policies as best and advise as best how they can be delivered. Um, the relative weighting then, then is given to our technical recommendations and the views of local people. Um, it's up to uh, the politicians to decide. I mean, I've got a lot of experience doing a lot of projects. Um, they have varying degrees of unpopularity, frankly. Um, they're always in somebody's front garden or back garden. That's in the nature of these things. Um, often people uh, worry about the impacts. They often um, see only the worst aspects of the schemes and not the more positive, which are not going to be less tangible than having something in your back garden or next to your back garden. Um, but uh, many, many schemes that have actually proved to be very successful, which at this stage were equally unpopular. Um, everybody wants to see new infrastructure, um, nobody wants it in the field next to them. You know, how many people here think the A14 should be improved? You know, well, people at Hilton aren't very happy about it because it's right next to them. 
sorry? Or proving the A428. Well, well, similarly, similarly when, they, they, when the high was agency, our high was agency come out as a route for the new A428 between Wack Cat and Caxton, no, well, it would be somebody's backyard. Okay, I think we're going, we're going to have a few comments from officers and uh, from members, and then we're going to move on to the actual resolution, please. So, so I'm going to start with Robin Palou. Yeah. Robin Palou yeah, from Cambridge, Past, Present and Future. I think if you were to try and select the most sensitive site on which to build a park and ride the whole way down the A428 corridor, you probably identified it. Um, the site which is proposed is at the top of a slope running up Maddingley Hill. It's not on the top, it's on the shoulder, which is visible from great distances to the south, the west and the east. It's an extremely prominent landmark on which you are now going to put a park and ride which not only is going to be intrusive, but at night it will be flooded as well, which will make it um, even more damaging. Um, I think that we should not allow the city deal to proceed basically on what has become an economic benefit decision um, at the cost of the social environment without putting forward at least a resolution calling them that to look at other sites which are less damaging uh, in terms of landscape and environment, particularly further back down the A428 on the north side, where you can get twin access and exit um, at the two roundabouts, one at Maddingly Marshall, one here, here. at Tasley of Corby Road. It's a site uh, which is eminently suitable, it has good access, and it is far less environmentally damaging. What I think people find frustrating is that the social and environmental considerations are subordinated the whole way through this process to what is perceived as being the short-term economic benefits. And in a, in a very sensitive site like Madding Mill, we should not allow that to get unchallenged. Thank you. If you like, I can if you, I offer you a resolution if you wanted to, because I really do think that we have to follow this thing up rather than just talking about it. Okay, do we want a resolution on that? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to suggest it and then we'll decide if we want it? <laughs> well, we do. Yeah, it's not about the um, it's not about the park and ride. It's about socio um, and social. It's about particularly the positioning of the park and ride. Okay, well, we, we're dealing with that. I thought you were maybe dealing with the communities issue. Um, do any other um, members want to uh, step in at this stage? I guess we're going to move on to the resolutions. Very quickly, one last comment. <laughs> Um, this is Rita Langan, Cranmer Road Residents Association. I think I understand people's angers with, anger with this consultation. Um, just to explain my background, I come from a technical accounting background, and you know, accounting standards are very much written on the, long, on the same basis. You have the staff, which I believe the analogous people are represented here today. Um, and then you have a consultation, and then you have a detailed consultation that comes after that. And I have to say, when I saw these board papers, um, I was very surprised because so many people had disagreed with the proposals in the initial consultation. I, I expected some change from what I had seen before, but when I, I look at the maps, I, I see um, the whole range of um, options that were there at the start, and that's unusual. Uh, when I've seen the county standards written, for example, the board has, has listened to the views and amended what they thought for the next stage of consultation, but, but I, I don't see that. And I, I realise that people here tonight are in an awkward position because you are affecting what the board would like um, um, done. But um, I, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to move on. Um, does anyone want to propose a resolution or, or are we happy that we're going to deal with these issues um, that have been raised? Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, item 5A, I'm, I am now going to ask Roger Cantrell, City Councillor for Newnham, to step forward and make an overall assessment and response. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. So um, I'm going to propose a resolution, and as you can see, I've set it out on this slide. It's resolution 5A. 
And what I'm proposing is that the LF does not support option 3A or 3 that the city deal is taken to move forward with. And that it doesn't support it on the basis that option 3A and 3 ignores the broader criteria of the city deal that the city deal put in in terms of evaluating these possible options. I just want to spend a few moments just pausing on the criteria and expanding out just to illustrate why I believe that the proposals before us don't meet the criteria. So there were four criteria broadly, which was value for money, environmental and social distributional impact, contribution to objectives and deliverability. And on the following slides, I've set out each of the criteria. So the first one, value for money. Well, as has already been mentioned, the cost-benefit ratio currently on the scheme is 0.2. So it's less than one is poor. The city deal itself puts a criteria of two for any project to move forward with. So already the scheme is woefully below what the city deal's benchmark is for the cost-benefit ratio. The total project is 170 million, currently funded most probably I can take the cost, sorry, I can take, I can take the Western Oldfield cost out. It's 141 million excluding the Western Oldfield. I have no problem with that because I don't have the cost benefit ratio of the, of the Western Oldfield to hand. But I don't think it increases it materially at this point, does it? Do you have that at this point? Do you have this, do you have that? Do you have that at this point? Right. So ignore the 170, 141 million, point two. And then the other point is the operating annual operating loss. Can I, can I correct you again? That's the whole life operating loss, and that's 60 years? Not the annual. You can run every bus in Cambridge for that. Well, I'm just taking from, I'm just taking from the, report no, the report on page 75. Okay. So, okay, so it's 13.3 million total operating loss, but, it, but it's still an operating loss. Still operating loss. And if you actually look at the comments from the report, the comments from the report, it's the highest cost and potential environmental impacts of the offline segregation of the route. And then also, if you look at the the um, the option three A and three uh, option three A is considered a viable option to a viable variation to option three, which may improve the BCR, for example, from reduced infrastructure lengths. And that's where the route isn't going across a dedicated off-road off option in terms of 3A. So, in my view, value for money, the proposition fails. Oops, just go back up. So, just before I explain this, I'll just make sure the officers are in agreement with me so we don't have a debate. Can you just double check that you're comfortable with that? I'm just extracting everything from the report that I looked through this afternoon, all 75 pages. So let's look at the environmental and social and direct and um, distributional impact. So the environmental impact score was 11 out of 40, the worst of all options. The report itself says that this option requires further environmental assessment. Noise, air quality, greenhouse gas emissions are modeled to increase as a result of the new route. That's in the report. Desktop assessment at this stage suggests that the relative effective, uh, effect on the landscape, historical environment, biodiversity may be significant <coughs> on, as this scheme includes most new offline infrastructure, again in the report. Now that's in the context of both local plans, the City Council local plan and the South Cam's local plan. At the heart of those local plans is the preservation of the green belt. <coughs> So on the one hand, we have a set of local plans saying that the green belt is going to be preserved. And yet on the other hand, we have a scheme that will destroy precisely the thing that the local plans are trying to keep. So on this criteria, I think the scheme fails as well. However, and if officers just check this again, just to make sure, because I don't want to have a debate with you. So um, the economic benefit the 679 million is placed as being the key objective of this scheme. And this is what this scheme basically hangs on. It's the objective that what this scheme delivers over a 30-year period 
is that economic benefit to this area. Now, my understanding is that that option, that calculation has a complex set of assumptions included in it in terms of getting to that calculation. And actually, moving them, one of those or two of those assumptions could materially impact that number, quite materially. So I'm not sure how grounded that assumption is. I know officers have followed quite a structured approach from the, which is followed to national guidelines, but I would question whether or not that is a, a sound number at this point. And then the final criteria is deliverability. So we had a public consultation. The public consultation put this as one out of five. It was the most opposed option in the public consultation. The deliverability risk is its highest. I think that's fair to say. I think that's in the officer's report. Deliver all of that's in the report. That's in the report. So the concerns on deliverability include the environmental impact on Coton and the Westfield and also the high cost. Now it's just worth touching on the guided bus route. We're familiar with the guided bus route. It's a good reference point. Officers have referenced it. The cost implications of the guided bus route we're aware of were not kept to budget. So that's one point. The second point that is worth referencing is the guided bus route is along a route that, of infrastructure that already existed in the landscape. Parts of the route were the old railway line. So you had an infrastructure route that already existed. This is a virgin route. This will actually cut across the green belt. There's no infrastructure sitting there already that may have been derelict for a number of years. So actually, it will be a very false environment. Very false environment for a long period of time. So those are the criteria that the City Deal Board is supposed to be using to assess this option. And I believe that actually, even though they meet one of the criteria, they fail on the other three. So my resolution is that call on the City Deal Board to remove from the proposed scheme the dedicated off-road bus route between Manning Mulch and the M11 across the fields um, of no north of Coton, and to remove the proposed scheme of the dedicated bus route across or alongside the Westfields area, coming out either on Adams Road, Herschel Road, the University Rugby Club, or Cranley Road, and to revert and explore in more detail other options that meet the criteria set out by the City Deal Board. This is the time for us to pause again. We had a resolution in the previous meeting where this LLF requested that the City Deal pause and go back to the drawing board. And it's not too late. It's not too late. And this is something that they should seriously consider. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Would the officers like to make a response to that at this stage or not? Um, we, our job is all the facts before the board. Uh, as Councillor Cantor has demonstrated, we have said all the facts before the board. I would just make one point. Um, coming back to consultation, there was significant opposition from the residents of Magnley Road to route down Magnley Road. So it's not entirely one sided. Can we speak now? No. <laughs> um, Okay, five minutes general public, so... Um. <coughs> you make your points quickly and... Yeah. I'm Councillor Hipkin. Um, I think the, the unease which I sense here this evening is uh, replicated on the Histon Road schemes and the Milton Road schemes. Uh, the Histon Road and the Milton Road schemes have excited the same degree of suspicion and worry. A gr there's a growing body of opinion, however, in the city that these road schemes, bus schemes, could be safely delayed pending the implementation of the city-wide measures, such as the workplace levy, the extension of residence parking, the blocking off of certain roads. And what I would like to get, if, if it's at all possible from the officers this evening, is any indication 
of the degree to which volumes of traffic coming to the, into the city will be reduced as a result of these measures, if these measures are implemented to the fullest degree. In other words, the, the city has got to be made inhospitable to many people sitting here this evening who will moan like anything because they're the ones who are going to be most directly affected because it's going to be increasingly difficult to get into the city. I'm not surprised at the silence. <laughs> okay, shall I speak again? Okay. Um, I'm Tanya Elliott uh, from FECRA. Sorry, you want me to speak? Can you, you stand, to stand up? up? Please. <laughs> right, okay, I'm Tanya Elliott from FECRA, and I am also a South Newnham resident. Um, I would like to point out from the democratic point of view, I don't think it's a referendum, it was supposedly a consultation, that 1,155 people actually showed most opposition against the South A option through the West Fields. And the total number of people answering the uh, consultation was 2,193. So that's in excess of 58% did not want that option. So that's just interesting to note. The other thing that, uh, the other day we had a briefing uh, on exactly the same subject. Um, and my question, one of my other questions was, why not take the bus through the West Cambridge Spinal Cord, as I think was mentioned earlier this evening. And I was told that it would not be fast enough. If the purpose of these busways that we've heard about, uh, whether it's Histon Road or Milton Road or the Maddingley Road one, whether the purpose of the busways is really to prove the viability of the new emerging local plan, then just let's build a few busways in places that people can accept them, if that's what you really want to do, uh, and get on with it, but not through sensitive places, not removing people's front gardens, not widening roads with lots more asphalt. Please, and then finally, can we please look at the other options, 21 of which you heard and were proposed during the call for evidence, some of which I gather that you are actually implementing, but just go for some options which are less invasive. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can I just comment on that? Yeah, very briefly. Um, Last night, and then, sorry, last week, last Wednesday night, I was at St Paul's Church on Hills Road. We were consulting on the peak congestion control points, the workplace parking, the expanded residence parking, etc. And the unanimous view of the people that were talking to me that evening was, you've got to improve the buses first. So what we're actually doing is taking these two things forward in parallel. Um, and on our current programme, we'll actually have implemented the peak congestion control points and the workplace parking levy before we actually do get to the point of actually doing the scheme because of the, the amount of time it will take, the consultation, the, the, the evidence gathering, the, the, the environmental assessment, design, mm -hmm. etc., will take three or four years. So these things will actually have happened by then. Uh, I think Councillor Hitt can ask the point about Manly Road under that scenario. Our modelling at the moment actually suggests an increase in traffic on Manly Road uh, as people seek to come out of the city to avoid the closure points on the ring road. That's why we want to do this as an experiment because we want to actually it's the effect which can model these things is difficult. Um, so we want to actually experiment with it and see what actually happens. Okay, one more comment from the public, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bill Caligari, I'm one of the residents up at uh, Maddingley Road, near, near Maddingley Maltz. Um, I just wanted to say that up until tonight, we had absolutely no idea. We kept hearing all this. Maddingly Mulch, Maddingly Mulch, New Parker Ride, Maddingly Mulch. Now we know uh, where it's going to be, and it's going to be at Crown Lee. Uh, um, my question is this, and perhaps someone can answer. The available area to put this New Park and Ride, how does that compare? Excuse me, can we do it? Sorry, I will, I will bring you in when we deal with the Park and Ride later, because we're okay. going to be dealing with things. We're going to get you know, into all kinds of okay. mess, and we're going to be here until midnight. Will but you then, please I will, make sure that you I bring will, me back? I will. I'll put it on my sheet. Okay. So, chap in green. Oh, thank you. No, chap in green. Right. Um, now we are going to talk about this as members, please. So, Bridget. Um, well, I think we have to.
to be, I, I think we have to be mindful about what is actually achievable. And, you know, there's no point in the LLF um, making uh, recommendations which we know have got a cat in hell's chance of getting through the assembly or the board. Um, and I'm not saying that's not the case here, but having looked, well, having taken into consideration a lot of the uh, points that you uh, talked about, risk and cost <coughs> and uh, value for money and so on, I wonder how you felt about option four, because I must say, um, reading the, the papers, there is um, the opportunity for the assembly and the board to not only approve further work to be done on Route 3A with three as the fallback, but also to ask for one of the other options to be worked up as well. And I wonder whether, if we're trying to think about um, the possibility of us actually influencing things, um, perhaps having a recommendation that says, fine, go ahead, work up 3A more, but alongside it, work up option four, because I think there are elements of option four which are more acceptable. Certainly there was quite a lot of support for the busway running through the, uh, the West Cambridge side, I gather, from the landowners and so on, um, and that seemed to meet quite a lot of needs there. Um, option four only added four minutes onto the bus time, so I want, you know, and I just think that, you know, we might possibly persuade them um, to work up a second, second option because it's quite a simple thing to ask them to do. So I did what you felt about that. Could somebody describe option four? I'll just read what was in the report. It's a, option four is medium, that's the level of intervention. Segregated bus route linking Camborne and Bourne Airfield. The route continues along St. Neots Road with the bus priority measures to the A1303 and the A428 junction. From here, a new offline segregated bus route going northeast from connecting into Maddingley Road west of the M11 bridge uses the existing bridge to cross the M11 and using a route through the West Cambridge to Great Road. I don't know if officers want to. I'm, I'm so, not quite sure what that is. But. Yeah. I mean, the key thing to say about the hybrid that we, we define all of these medium level interventions as hybrid routes, and the key thing is, you know, a big concern today is about environmental impacts. So, uh, one of the key concerns was that going to the north of Maddingley Road, Maddingley Hill, um, had a potentially bigger. Uh, environmental impact than going to the south because of the, the fact that proximity to uh, various uh, sort of key bits of green infrastructure like the Triple SI, 800 wood, and also the, the key issue of the set setting of the cemetery. The thing <coughs> being is, is that, um, and then of course option four as well will go through the, the west field, so we want to define that. So the key point here is in trying to think of an end-to-end -end solution, my argument would be um, what is the point of having the negative environment, environmental impacts if there are any, without having the end-to-end -end benefits, because in the end, all you, you're doing then is, is that if, I suppose, you, you know, you're getting the negatives without the positives. Now, I'm not saying there are ne negatives in, in the option 3 o because I think they can be mitigated, but as a matter of principle, why would you want to choose, if you like, a compromise <coughs> option that doesn't deliver the best scheme um, and actually still has the environmental issues that you uh, are, are expressing a concern about? So that, that would be my comment um, from the sort of officer perspective. Yeah. I, th I think you have to be very, you have to be consistent. I mean, if you're going to include the West Cambridge site in the catchment area, then surely that implies there is a possibility that the bus will go through the West Cambridge site. And if the bus goes through the West Cambridge site, then it doesn't go through the West Fields. Yes. So I just don't understand where you're coming from, because actually, whether you're talking about option four, or you're talking about option three or three A, um, you know, the Charles Babbage Road route is a route that was always mentioned. In fact, there was a there was a, a guide you issued day one in your email that was called Short Guide. And the short guide actually said it'll be the Charles Babbage Coton Footpath or alternatively possibly sell. Or something something along there was a there was a, a paragraph along those lines. So if you're not going to include the West Cambridge site within the process, why have you included it within the catchment area? 
Uh, can I just uh, just add? So, in the in view of the, we're, we're using um, damage to the environment as an argument for rejecting option four here, but actually option three scored 11 out of 40 for environmental impact, which was the worst of all the options. So I'm afraid that argument does not carry weight at all. Could, could you answer the question, please? Because you haven't actually answered my question, so. In response to the, your question, Steve, all those options, all those options go through the Westfields, and they all do indeed connect with the development, West Cambridge development. That's a fact. So the West, sorry, the West area West that's sorry, caught on the catchment plan is the area. How many physically possible? Just think. If it crosses the M11 and it goes into the West Cambridge yeah. side, it never goes through the Westfield. So I don't understand where you would then go outside of West Cambridge and across to the most so Using Cranmer Road as an example, Cranmer is the most extreme one to the south. So a diagonal route in terms of a bird, you know, a sort of A to B is possible. However, I suspect once that was assessed, one would note difficulties with simply drawing a straight line between the two because of the environmental impacts. The point of the catchment here is shown is to show the southern route, the southern corridor of potential access and that means that yes it will connect with West Cambridge and yes it will go through at some point the Westfields and it, I think it's important that people understand that. The option that's been discussed around the table also includes that. Moving to the point about environmental impacts, at this stage, this early assessment stage where no field work is undertaken at all and based on desktop studies of, and monitorising the impacts is quite right with the segregated route, which is a long segregated route, scores the highest impacts. Moving to the okay. next stage where the assessments are carried out, then they can be further understood and reduced in terms of scope. Thank you. Um, members, have we got any more comments on either option four or Rod's uh, resolution? So I, I mean, I'd like to propose a, um, a slightly different resolution, please. Um, thank you. Um, I would like to, and I'm going to amalgamate a couple, perhaps a couple that we had that we discussed earlier, Helen. Um, one was that we would support further appraisal being carried out on option 3A um, if the Westfields area to the south of the footpath, the Coton Countryside Reserve, and the area to the south of the Pole Hill Garden Centre are removed from the catchment area, but also request that uh, further full appraisal be carried out on option four, which has been identified as cheaper, less risky, and similarly an effective route, but also with the removal of those sensitive bits, essentially um, taking the red area back to the Coton footpath. Does, okay. that, does that work for you, Rod? So that is that the LLF would support further appraisal being carried out on option 3A if the Westfields area south of the footpath, the Coton Countryside Reserve, and the area to the south of Pole Hill Garden Centre are removed from the catchment area. Chair, I, I just have a couple of observations. The, the first one is, I think, as a, as a body, we need to make a very clear statement to the City Deal Assembly and the City Deal Board. You know, we, we're either principled in which we say, you know, this scheme doesn't work, um, and that's how that position is. We then may come forward with some other proposals, but I think it is very important that this body sends that message, if we do indeed vote in favour of this resolution, that the residents and other key stakeholders are not supportive of this scheme as it stands. So that's an important message we need to send. In relation to option four, I, it comes down to definitions. And for me, you know, the, the, the access onto Adams Road is just as much as the Westfields component. You have on one side of the Coton footpath, you have a protected open space. On the other side, you have a sustainable pond, which is part of the university's um, uh, sports facility, um, and was specifically um, built into the planning approval. And that will all go, because it will be a, a piece of tarmac 20 metres wide. 
so, I, mean, I, so I, I, I think I'm happy to explore option four, but in reality, I, I'm very nervous about that option four still allowing buses to come out of that route onto Adams Road, even if we ex exclude the Westfield. Is it just about um, environmental issues, though? Are there, what are the final well, no, I don't think there are, issues? I don't think there are environmental issues. I think also we all know that the, one of the key stakeholders, one of the objectors to the local plan, St John's, are seeking to bring forward a proposition for the space between the Coton footpath and the uh, CPPF green finger. And they will argue that one of the reasons why they can do that now is there is a sustainable transport going right next to the site. Yeah. And, and it's not necessarily about the, the consortium, which is the whole of the Westfields, because St. John's have uncoupled themselves from that consortium in relation to that part of the site. Okay. I'll I think... be going into all that detail, but uh, just to be clear on that point, in terms of, for example, the North Barton Landowners Group, they've actually included the bus we're going through the St. John's Land and then through South as part of the scheme. And I think that you're right that, uh, you know, if we damage, I think where Bridget is right is that she's also trying to protect, um, sorry, I'm sorry, just take, I think where Bridget's proposal is correct is I think that unless we uh, protect the openness of the, of the green belt, I mean, effectively, if you look at some of the options, they completely open up that space. And the same, to some extent, you know, goes for the Coton. I mean, I, I, I agree with Bridget's point about removing the Coton orchard. There's no reason for that orchard to be, uh, you know, sliced through. So I personally, and I'm only one vote, I absolutely support uh, what uh, Bridget is saying, but it has, to, as Rod correctly says, we're rejecting the scheme as it is, because the scheme as it is is unaltered. So the scheme as it is is rejected, but we will but we will push for the, the amendment to the catchment area because also if you look at clause 12 of the document, the clause 12 uh, talks about the criteria on which routes will be rejected. And it's a bit like the point, uh, so what? So what's your name again? Steve, I'm surprised you forgot my I know your name, but it's just yeah. Adrian. <laughs> the, 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 the point Adrian's making is that, you know, he said, I think, that the bin brook will probably fail on ecological grounds. So why include it now? Why waste money on scoping schemes which are just going to get rejected? It's stupid. That's my opinion anyway. Um, I think we have to um, have some structure to this um, uh, going forward. I mean, we're, we're mixing up several things here. I mean, it seems to me the key things we're discussing is whether or not we want them to um, uh, keep or... or do some more work on option four, and, and we're not clear yet what the advantages are of, of option four, and, and, and we should deal with that on the one hand, but the other hand is we're, we're um, debating here whether or not we are rejecting the scheme in its entirety, um, or whether we are leaving open a corridor north of the Pole Hill Garden Centre where we could, where this Busway could possibly go, and then somehow go down Charles Babbage Road. It, I think it, it, it. Are we throwing it all out, or are we? Can I, can I suggest the proposal that we, we keep the resolution as is, but amend little C to incorporate the comments that, that Bridget. So it makes a clear statement in relation to the current proposals, and little C we can expand because we are saying that we explore in more detail other options. So we can expand that out to incorporate what, what you were proposing. Well, I mean, I, I was saying, you know, that, I mean, we, you have to be realistic about what we can achieve here. And we are not, you know, it doesn't matter how much we object to it. You know, 4,000 people have signed a petition. And, you know, this is still going ahead. You know, this is a bit of a runaway train. So we have to be realistic about what we can. Only it was a trick. Well, what we can, <laughs> <laughs> what we, what we can, you know, what we can influence, and we, you know, we can either be a protest group that just tells the board and the assembly and the officers that actually we don't like it, we think it's a rubbish idea, or we can try and be constructive and try and, you know, alter it to make it as good as it can be, on the assumption that, you know, we are going to get this in some way. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to um, my, my own parishes about planning applications, you know, which they don't want. And I say, by all means, oppose it. But let's do some work to make it as good as it can be. So if you do get it, 
It's not, you know, it's not the worst it can be. It is the best that is possible. So, I mean, I think it's really important that we're, you know, we're not just a group of people opposing this. We're a group of people willing to add value to it and say, okay, you know, albeit we don't want it, you know, we have to acknowledge there is, a, there is not a lot of people here are actually pro, pro because they want uh, to be able to get into Cambridge. But you know, how can we make it be better, assuming we are going to get it? Um, so we know, you know, we, I think it's, we're quite clear about the things we really don't want. You know, we don't want it going through the West Fields. There's evidence in the papers for it going through the West Cambridge development and that being supportive. You know, our problem here is that you know, the, the priority for the officers who are tasked with doing this is all about bus times and that kind of overrides everything else and our priorities are slightly different. And you know, I'm willing to sit on a bus for extra four minutes you know, knowing that it isn't cutting us way through the west west fields, uh, but you know that's that's what the office is briefing. So you know we can't lambast them for that. Um, so it's about how we can make it how we can make it better, and actually possibly get the board and the assembly to listen to us and make some changes. Thank you, Penny. Um, Join the microphone. Um, um, Penny Heath from North Newnham Residents Association. Um, I'm getting very unhappy about talking about the scheme in isolation uh, to all the other bits that come one side of the bus and then when it gets to the city centre access study. Um, it, it's just so complicated. I'm, 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 I'm nervous about um, perhaps put, pinning our, our colours to what's supporting one option or another. And there is an option um, in this paper, paraphrase one, alternatively the, the city executive board may consider another option to be selected. As the third option against the officer recommend against the officer recommendation for detailed design and further consultation. It's a bit it's, a, it's an open door to just give you a bit more flexibility at this stage. And I think the, the two comments I've heard the last um well, few hours, it's about getting the right strategic decision. And we're just we 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 know we're on wrong, we're on we're on this sort of roller coaster towards something that's just not the right strategic decision. And I think it was Adrian the other night said it's about setting the right course. And we all want to be setting the right course. We have got to find a way to get buses and um, you know, better transport and, and all the other um, things to make smarter transport first. And uh, I, I just think we should stop trying to decide between option three and option four at this stage. My, my problem that is with that is that you know, the, the assembly and the board are looking for a steer from us. That's what that's what our role is, you know. If we don't give them that steer, they'll you know they'll assume that we haven't got we haven't got a plan. And so you know even if it's it's not perfect, you know we're not going to have a perfect solution. I think we have to come up with some sort of steer. And if you know if we say work up option four, it doesn't it's not us saying we're we're happy with option four. It means work it up. And you know there could end up being a sort of mishmash of elements of three A and elements of four because obviously there's potential for all sorts of bits to fail on all sorts of different criteria. Well, so um, it's about um, you know. Okay, hang on, so a minute, hang on a minute. So let me finish one person before we start the I've said it. Um, it's well, also I think it goes to the crux of what we want to do here, and I think members have to quickly vote on this. I mean, do we want to say we don't like it at all? Um, in any shape or form, or do we want to specifically say the things we really don't like and then leave the door open for you know, perhaps some other um, option to emerge? And it goes to, we, we, we're going to have to decide this now because it goes to the absolute, cru abs <coughs> absolute crux of what we're going to say. Right, so, so my opinion is that you know, I can't say I don't like it all because actually there's elements I do like. I do like the idea of um, you know, a bus, well, a, a proper bus service running through the new developments of West Camborne, Camborne and Bourne Airfield, because you know these are new developments and it will sit yeah, quite no, comfortably there. Okay. So then that's then giving them support to build more houses there. So you're going to have something the size of City of Winchester without the proper infrastructure. But for it. we've already got Camborne, Bourne, um, West Camborne, I think. Has it actually been approved, or is it being approved? Any? any it's yeah. almost. It's almost there, isn't it? I think they just. <coughs> okay. Fine. Right. So it's it's nearly it's nearly there. And, and at this stage, we are only talking, I think, about. 
divided the route up, so we are only talking about from yeah. the from the Manning and Marsh roundabout to Grange Road. So, so I think we have to be quite specific about that. So you know, the difficult bit is Maddingly Mulch into the into the city, and I, I, you know, I'm a South Cams councillor. I'm not a city councillor, so I don't have Rob's detailed knowledge about this. Well, I think we're just going to have to vote on this particular issue. You know, do um, 17 votes that we have? Do we want to say? that from Manning the Mulch Roundabout to Grange Road, we don't want any of it and um, send the, uh, that message to the board, or do we want to say we don't like it going through the West Fields, we don't like it going through the Coton Countryside Preserve, and we don't like it going through Coton Orchard, and if they take those out, we, we, we might then Can consider. Well, the no, I'm afraid you can't. No, the, no, this is this is a, a local you liaison forum meeting. No, you're accepting no, Maddingly Mulch no, I'm not going to. No, this is a. We are now um, talking as a local liaison forum, and the public have been invited to come and listen. Indeed, yes, no. but if you want to vote about something that needs to be debated, well, it's being you're debated. accepting that that's the chosen location. No. But it doesn't make we sense. Know, we are debating whether or not we want to throw this scheme out in its entirety. Yes, throw it out. <laughs> Maybe you might it's not the best location. Can I, can I, sorry. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, but, but I really don't like you interrupting and we're going to be here an awfully long time if we can't keep to the structure of the meeting. Thank you. I've just got, I've just got a, a straightforward point, which is the LLF has a duty, I believe, to not, that we can, we can say we don't like the scheme because we don't like the scheme. We've already said as a community we don't want the scheme. So this is semantics. We, we've already said, you know, 70% of people don't want the scheme. But we have been asked by the city deal to give them a steer on what we find totally ridiculous and unacceptable and, we, and what we would, we could live with. And I think that, quite frankly, I mean, one of the things I think we should say is we should say we don't want the Manningley Mulch, um, uh, you know, park and ride. I actually agree with that. I agree with Robin Pelly. I think that should be one of our recommendations. We should say this is an outrage. Stephen, we're getting yeah, no, 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 no. But so, so just going back to Bridget's point, I think Bridget's point is an intelligent one, which is to say that some areas of the catchment, it's actually a very practical point, some areas of the catchment are not fit for purpose and should not be included. The catchment is wrong, and I think it's a sensible, practical alteration to say we want some areas removed. Robin Palou. We're going to be here all night at this rate, so a practical <laughs> suggestion. Can we not have a resolution which starts by saying we accept the necessity for some form of improved public transport corridor linking the new developments of the west of Cambridge along the A428 corridor into Cambridge. And then say, but we have serious reservations on environmental grounds about the proposed option 3A, and we would ask the city deal to consider other options where social and environmental criteria are given equal weighting to economic benefit in determining a route which is less damaging. And leave it at that. Don't specify where it goes. It's not our role. Just say we're dissatisfied with this, and the reason why we're dissatisfied is because the criteria are stacked in favor of short-termism in terms of journey time. We need to have a sustainable development where both economic and social are given equal weight. And we don't need to specify specific routes. We'll be here all night if we want to do a specific route. Could I second that? <laughs> right. Um, Rod, do you want to just come back and then we're going to decide what to do? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with a with a, 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 recommend, a resolution which is along those lines. The only thing I would say is I do think you need to broaden out the criteria because it's not just environmental and social. They, they fail on all the other criteria except the one criteria that they, they prioritise. So if we include the other criteria, I think that, that would work, basically. Include them. OK. Have you got that? Can you, can you specify what they are, please, so then we know what criteria. we're going to Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically the other criteria related to value for money and the deliverability. So the environmental, social, distributional impact was the one I think Robin was referencing. 
yeah, so it's um, there is an, I think, some like even more than what. And Bridget, you sit on the Joint Assembly. Do you really think this will hold more sway than us saying, actually, we don't want these three pieces in the in the puzzle? Take them out. Um, I think it's a. I mean, I, I really like you know what you've said, and in in the ideal world, yes. But I think it. <coughs> I think it's too open ended. I think if we were categorically saying, you know, cut out the red area south of the Coping Footpath, I think, they can, I think that is very easy for them to do because they can look at a map and they can see it. And, you know, bearing in mind, you know, the Assembly is, um, you know, it's nine politicians and six non-politicians, you know, people who aren't used to planning things. I, I think it needs to be, I think, I do think we need to be quite specific about the bits that we absolutely will not accept but then we can say, but you know, we want you to look at areas which fit the other criteria. Okay, who, who agrees with that um, as a way forward? It's really hard. It's it's hard. Subject to the first what is the other to the third? Hang on, what's this one? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we're going to we're going to say that um, those against as well. Those against, yes, those against, please. I'm sorry, that's not me. <laughs> against one. Two, two. Two. So we must have five abstentions then. Um, so we are going to say where is the resolution? <coughs> So we are going to say um, the, a, uh, the LLF would support further appraisal carried out on option 3A of the Westfields area south of the footpath, the Coating Countryside Reserve and the area south of Pole Hill Garden Centre are removed from the catchment area. We also recommend further um, appraisal of option 4. Or are we not being specific about option 4? Well, I, well poss possibly, I possibly need Robin's wording. I think, I think we possibly don't shouldn't be saying Option 4, but we should be saying, we should be taking the words that Robin came up with okay. um, and adding them on. So saying, you know, saying what quite specifically we are excluding, yeah. but then saying we would like the City Deal to work up other options which fit these the criteria that Robin has outlined. Okay. Right, who can... Sure, can I just make a point? I mean, if we go down that route, we are recognising that the City Deal the Board and Assembly will jump on this opportunity to say, well, actually, the LLF is supportive of a route that cuts off-road off through Coton in some shape or form. Just let me finish. Yeah, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will go off route. There are houses between Manningley Road and where we would suggest that the bus route goes, which is north of the garden centre. And, you know, fundamentally, it's the principle of that is precious open space. We can't argue at one level that it's actually precious space, and then at another level, compromise that position by saying, well, it's all right if it's north of a certain area. And officers struggle anyway, because you've got a catchment area which is kind of blurred. So I, I have real challenges with that, because you know we're kind of making it up on the hoof in terms of that. Well, I don't think we should be doing that. I think, Chair, we should leave it to you to elaborate to the extent that the uh, Assembly and the Board engage with you when you sit down with them in terms of what the sentiment of this meeting was and make a clear message to the, to the City Deal Assembly and to the City Deal Board. We're clearly getting very heated here because we're opening <laughs> the, the, uh, the windows. Um, that basically the route's not acceptable. And I don't think we should be discussing the detail because I, I don't think we will get an agreement which is one which is reflecting the view of the people we represent. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, Helen can speak for Coaton. I mean, uh, I mean, surely Helen's using Coaton's accounts, don't I? I mean. Well, I don't want the route at all, uh, anywhere south of um, 
uh, Mullingly Road. But at the same time, if we, you know, the issue is if we say we don't want it at all, are we going to get something we really don't want? Okay, can I just make a point? The, the, the recommendation says that there is an obligation on the director to continue to consult with us and have input post the decision. So on, on the second page of the recommendation, it says that the Executive Director of Economy, Transport and Environment will, acting with input from us and other various organisations, will develop the scheme going forward, if the scheme is approved. So there is an opportunity to influence what happens in relation to the scheme, even if the City Deal Assembly and the Board don't agree with what our view is. And I think that's the opportunity where we can come together again and think in more detail in terms of what those specific options are. I think my point on the developers and the, the advantage they will secure by five years option being left in is also relevant because, and I'm going to talk about this shortly, but if you leave in the Westfields option, the local plan challenge by Johns and the university and the other colleges is much easier. Mm -hmm. And I think we're partly motivated, I'm afraid, by looking at the bigger picture, which is that these, you know, frank, frankly, Greenfield bus routes are literally a, a total gift to the developers. Yeah. So it's not just about this scheme. And also, I have, I'm afraid, I spoke to, I've known Nick for years, I spoke to Nick when I came, he said, we need a bus route from Campbell. And if we just sit here and say, we're not prepared to talk about anything, we're just going to have what's just happened to us happen again, where they're just going to give us something we don't want. So if we don't actually speak up, I think it's what Bev said, if we don't actually say anything, would they not be just given something we don't want? Well, why don't we turn it around and say, instead of saying we could support the scheme if certain things are taken out, is we don't support the scheme because they're in. Okay, <laughs> so let's do that. But that, that's what the, motion, that's yeah. what the resolution yeah. does. It says remove and remove. And we'll leave it to them to work it out. Because actually, remember, this, this resolution only deals with the scheme from where the route goes off route at Manly, Move, at Manly Mulch. It doesn't consider the scheme earlier on. The scheme earlier on is a separate resolution. I'm just dealing with the part. Of yeah, that but is our resolution that we that the LNF does not support the scheme, uh, would not support any scheme um, south of Maddingley Road, whilst intrusion into the Westfields, the co the um, Coton Countryside Reserve and the Orchard is um, suggested. Okay, all right. Thank you. And what do we want to do about other routes? Do we want to ask them to work up any other routes? Well, Any other options? Again, my worry is if we're not experts, not civil engineers or planners and such like, and so by saying you want to go this way, unless unless you really know that is and done some research, I'm sure the the officers are, are better at calculating that than we are. So to say, I'm quite happy with saying we do not like this route because of environmental issues, but to say over there would be better, mm -hmm. I'm I'm unhappy with. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are we not asking them to um, uh, work up any other options then? Well, I think if, we, if we're saying we don't want it to go this route, then presumably that's implying that they would work up other options, but we're not saying which options to, to, to okay, work Okay, so out. we're not specifying the options. Is everyone happy with that? Okay, so can we go forward on that basis? <laughs> Have you got all that? I think it's what's on the screen, actually. <laughs> well, it's not telling them to remove things, it's telling them why we don't um, why we don't like it, or why we can't accept it, or even start negotiating on the basis of it, because certain things are in it. Okay. Anyway, can we vote on that basis, please, now? Number of votes, um, four. No, number of votes, four. Can someone count them, please? <laughs> Just We're just saying we can't accept the scheme in its current form because those three areas are in it. Eleven. Eleven. Against, please. Just one. Just one. We only got twelve here now, or is somebody no, not voting? Extension. No, are we happy we've got that? Because that's quite fundamental. Okay, the clock, the eye on the clock now. Well, good evening, everybody, those of you who are still awake. Um, my name's Robin Pellew, and I'm chairman of the Cambridge Past, Present and Future Planning Committee. 
I think all of us appreciate the logic and common sense behind changing the configuration of the Gatton interchange to allow southbound traffic off the A428 onto the M11. I don't think I have to make the case. All I will emphasize is that when Mark McDonald did the uh, access audit um, about 18 months ago, it showed that approximately one in five cars during the morning peak rush hour coming down Maddingly Rise weren't actually trying to get into Cambridge at all. They were trying to turn right to get onto the M11. So if that was stopped, no access to the M11 going south of when you come from the west from, from the Maddingly Mouse roundabout down Maddingly Rise, no access off the A1303 onto the M11, and instead the access was provided to Curtin Road. It would free up quite a lot of the traffic, which would enable the buses to run faster. Um, the point which I want to make is that we have been arguing uh, or discussing with the city deal and the county and others and indeed highways authority to try and find out what was the rationale for them dismissing what seems like a perfectly sensible suggestion particularly at a time when the interchange is being reconfigured as part of the A14 upgrade. We found it extremely difficult because of one might almost say the obduracy of officials and it seems that the buck passing between different agencies, uh, particularly the city D was saying this is not within our remit, it's highways authority, highways authority passing it back to county, county to city, and so on, has made it extremely difficult to get a grip on this issue to find out actually what was the factual basis for making the, the highways England to make their decision not to change the, the uh, configuration the way we want. So the resolution which I'm proposing calls basically for the release of all relevant information, including correspondence, minutes of meetings, um, the traffic uh, survey data, the modeling information, cost benefit ratio information, so we can actually get a grip and find out why this decision has been, well, both why this decision has been made, also to determine the vigour and robustness with which um, the County Council have actually pursued this suggestion with Highways Authority. Um, we've been told, but it doesn't meet a high, sorry, Highways England. We've been told by Highways England it doesn't meet that cost-benefit ratio because of the, uh, the small traffic volume coming down that road. But I haven't, we have not been able to see figures to actually substantiate this it would appear that their figures are different to the Mott McDonald figures. So we would like to have all this information released into the public domain for examination so that uh, a more rigorous assessment can be made of the merits of proceeding with that change to the Girton, to the Girton interchange, which will, I think, have a, a major beneficial effect upon traffic flow down um, the uh, Madding Rise. So, that is the wording of the resolution. Um, it calls on the City Deal and Cambridgeshire County Council to release all documents. It should actually, I think, probably include call on Highways England to release all the documents um, that show the vigour with which these negotiations have been pursued <coughs> and which actually shows what evidence base Highways England had actually used in order to make that decision. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Robin. Um, actually, I don't think we need to discuss the Girton Interchange. A anybody living west of the city knows that, you know, pound for pound, this is the thing that would make most difference. So I think I'm just going to go for a vote on this one. So all in favour of Robin's um, uh, resolution. Anybody against? Right. Okay. Uh, can I now invite um, Ben Dunsey? Um, so, um,
Ben has been asked by um, Coton Parish Council in the, in the absence of the Chair and the Vice Chair to give a presentation um, part of the Transport Working Group. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Chair. Hello, everybody. Ben Dancy. Uh, I live in the village and uh, I also run a business at the end of Maddenley Road, so I'm at both ends of it. I, uh, I'm interested. So, ben, um, can you speak into the microphone, please? Thank you. Apologies. Is that better? Thank you. Uh, so, I want to give you a quick better alternative. I've got eight slides. I will try and go through them promptly so that it's clear for you to all see what I'm talking about. So, Coton Parish Council rejects option 3A in its entirety because we feel it's not proven that a segregated busway cannot run alongside Manningy Hill, the existing infrastructure, and thus avoid the damage to the countryside that Mr. Pellew has already outlined, and the damage to our community as well, which we've already <coughs> discussed a lot this evening. We feel in Coton that residents of other South Cambridgeshire villages, especially those on the fringes of Cambridge, should be deeply concerned about the precedent of what is being proposed for a historic village like ours, potentially like yours. Not only are we faced with a busway cutting straight through the village, but now the park and ride at Cromley, as big as Trumpington, coming within 50 metres of the nearest housing estate here in the village, set on the hill that Mr Pellew has described previously this evening, dominating the village day and night. And the fact that our representatives, you know, are considering this, you know, should, you know, it's good to see so many people here tonight worried about that. We're familiar with the corridor, so I'm going to go on. So the, the better alternative that I would just like to cover briefly is really thinking about Maddenley Hill and the, you know, the opportunities that it presents already. You know, we feel that there's clear evidence that the off-road option, and we've talked about it a lot this evening, so I won't dwell on it, was favoured from the outset. And indeed that they've ignored the views of thousands of local people. And we've all touched on the kind of the wider frustrations that there are so many intelligent people in the city thinking about things like, you know, autonomous vehicles, things like the potential for tunnels. The, the conversation that we're having now is just not connected into what, you know, what other kind of decisions may be available to us. So we feel there's potentially a better alternative, which is up on the screen at the moment. We feel that a two-way busway alongside Madney Hill is possible to achieve, and we feel the benefits are significant. And I'm just speaking as a member of the village. We feel it would add no more than two minutes, and we've heard members of the decision makers here this evening say they'd be prepared to give a few minutes in order to preserve things that have been there for decades and centuries. We feel it would be far less damaging to the environment than the preferred route, which slices through land with we think six National Trust covenants to the, to, the, to the north of the village itself. That would need an act of parliament to achieve. Then through the century-old orchard that we've heard. Then through the reserve, before reaching Westfields that we've talked about already. And we feel it would be less ruinous to our historic village of Coton. The preferred option potentially comes within 10 feet of the nearest houses in the village. You know, incredibly close. And we've talked this evening already about the welfare of the community given so little weight. And this idea could save tens of millions, 50, 60 million pounds, this sort of thinking that you see on the screen in front of you. So in short, we don't really understand why thinking about Maddingley Hill, the 81303, more imaginatively, hasn't been done, hasn't been given serious consideration. A very rudimentary survey of the footprint of Maddingley Hill shows us that it's between 20 and 30 metres wide. So I'm just, the next few slides is just explaining you know, the width of what's available and what we think is possible to go down it. The Cambridge to St Ives guided bus scheme is six metres wide, consisting of two 2.6 metre wide tracks, separated by a central reservation of 80 centimetres. There's a four metre wide bridleway, which um, uh, the people from the team have showed us photographs of earlier on. The total width of it is 10.7 metres. You can 
see it here on the screen. So if we just go to the next slide. Oh, sorry, someone. Thank you. It's like it's happening by magic. <laughs> okay. So you can see within the available footprint of what's on Manningley Hill that actually we feel that you really could actually fit a two-lane busway, the existing road that's already there, and the necessary cycle path. And we, we just feel this is something that, that should be considered. We don't know if there are te technical issues to achieving this, but it's just something that we feel you know, really should be given serious consideration given the social and economic impacts that we've, that we've heard about tonight. But what then happens when we reach the bridge at the bottom of the hill, which is only 16.8 metres wide? And Mr Perlew has already mentioned about you know, the potential for closing the right turn to go south and the benefits that that might bring us. So we would propose five lanes that go over the bridge, 3.3 metres wide each, one for each bus lane and car lane, plus one if it's really necessary for turning right onto the M11. <clears throat> and then shoulders, if we just go on to the next screen, and there are bridges over the river quite like this, you know, sort of flying sh shoulders where pedestrians and cyclists could cross either side of it. So you can see this here. If the City Deal really want to spend 67 million of our money on a brand new bus only and apparently sub-optimal bridge, the route could leave the carriageway just before the current M11 bridge. And I think we have another picture of that. That's the purple line on the screen there. So if they really want their bridge onto Charles Babbage Road, that we feel could still be achieved. So the resolution, this is my final slide. Next slide, please. So this is the resolution. The A428 LLF believes that there is sufficient width for a high quality busway and cycle facility alongside existing Manningley Rise from the A428 A1303 junction to the M11 junction. And we ask that the Greater Cambridge City Deal Board explore this option in more detail. Thank you. Can you tell me where the park and ride will be proposed, please? Uh, site two. Site two. The, the university site next to the uh, cemetery. Yeah. The the um, the rudimentary measurement that was done, by the way, um, uh, was from hedge to hedge, and um, and it came to between. I think the lowest was 19.8 meters, and the widest was. 28. So, any members like to comment? Um, can, can we just ask the officers why that was uh, rejected in the in the first place? It's such an One of the thing. reasons is because of the width of the corridor. So the width of the corridor, we believe, wouldn't allow for what's been tabled there. One of the reasons is because of severance and the need to allow for accesses to existing properties, Crowley Business Park, Manley Cemetery and residential properties along there. So we didn't envisage uh, the prospect of being able to get that level of segregation down that section. In a similar way, we've pointed to that on the section that's to the east of the M11. So there, again, it narrows down to a point where you could get one lane running, and it might be tidal, but it would be one lane, and you wouldn't be able to improve um, cycle provision, in fact, might even be detrimental to cycle provision. So, much but of nobody's the talking about the, the, the road after the bridge. We're talking here purely about the road to yeah. the bridge and how to get over it so I, I and turn say, right. I would say to you that, you know, with respect to your reader entry measurement, um, I think you will find that the impacts on the adjoining properties will be severe and also the environmental impact of cutting that sway down there without mitigation of 
trees and hedgerows, etc., would be very difficult to provide in that corridor. You would have to provide them somewhere else. So I think, in principle, there's a lot of difficulties in, if not uh, infeasible, in terms of particularly property impacts of that proposal. I'd also add that that proposal kind of skips over the issue of Cambridge Road Cope and Cambridge Road Medley, because in effect you would be creating a, a severance for vehicles trying to emerge. And in effect you basically be creating potentially a huge problem for Cope because the traffic would, wouldn't be able to get out of Cope at peak times. You'd have to introduce a new signalised junction at least. And we already know that junction is already over capacity. In, uh, you know, that area is already over capacity. Um, so I think it, it doesn't achieve, as Adrian said, it's yeah, going back to my own point about hybrids, it doesn't achieve these key benefits um, and it also has environmental <coughs> costs, it's not cost free um, and as Adrian, a very good point, as we see in, in, in all these other schemes where it's on, on road highway, you're very constrained with the amount of uh, mitigation that you can actually put in place. You know, there can't be an avenue of trees down there or anything like that because in effect you're taking every spare inch of of, of space, the public highway. So, um, I, I so effectively, in terms of strategic fit, when we looked at option one, these were the considerations that we made in determining that it didn't do the things that it needed to do, which is deliver segregation, because it wouldn't effectively be segregation because of all the severance issues. But you could so run it down the middle of the road and only turn left out of your uh, property, then, couldn't you? If that was the deal. Well, when we talk about the uh, issue. Um, these middle road bus lanes, and they're simply going to be hugely uh, environmentally costly because in order for them to even work at a conceptual level, they would need to be accompanied by a significant amount of traffic management. Um, so really, you know, you're talking about turning Maddingley Road into uh, an urban um, environment in terms of the amount of traffic management that needs to go through, uh, Maddingley Hill, I should say, uh, going through that in order to manage a middle of the road bus lane. You know, and we have looked, and there is a technical note which I would refer people to a technical note which has been published on the web regarding our considerations of the of the road bus lanes. And although that was a contraflow bus lane, the same principles around traffic management, the signage, uh, gantries, all of that stuff, all applies to a two-way bus lane. In fact, probably even more so because the risk factors are even greater where you've got vehicles coming two ways down the middle of the road and vehicles, other vehicles turning across it. So um, it's not, it, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's an idea that's going to work um, in this sense. Personally, but you know that's more. There can't be more than half a dozen properties on Ludding Hill. This benefit to those properties can be massive. Um, you know. well, one of our duties is to, as we do, with mitigating everything else, is mitigate our impact on property. And if we were to take a property and sever its access to the highway or prevent it from getting to power without provision of an entrance somewhere else means that that is a total loss of that property, a detrimental impact on that property. Therefore, the budget you're talking about could quite rapidly rise. I'm also mindful of the Grade 1 listed building, which is Madeline Cemetery, and the impact it may on of that. Also, the proposal that you've got for the uh, park and ride being next to the Triple SI um, site, which is one of the big problems with Site 2. So I think there's a number of in principle difficulties with the proposal and again I would say that it is within the thinking of what we've done when we've looked at trying to put something down that route that frankly wouldn't stack up to provide the strategic fit in terms of what the policy it demands and what the vision or the agreement the city deal has in mind in terms of uh, investing through transport for wider economic uh, benefits. But, but with the greatest respect, those are issues that are common to what's been outlined on 3A. I mean, you know, National Trust covenants, Acts of Parliament, environmental damage to, you know, pristine view. Well, you know, that these are the same issues. We're all just things need to be assessed. And, um, you know, you might argue that one environmental impact outweighs another, but that's not how an environmental impact assessment has to be addressed. So they're quite serious impacts in terms of property. One of the things that we've done through the catchment routes that we've shown, and indeed one of the reasons we've, we've, we've shown them, is to make it clear to people that there aren't properties being demolished as part of the project, nor there seems to be any need, as far as we can see at this strategic stage, to take people's front gardens, which was certainly 
the case with the work that we did when we looked at going down the existing highway route. Can, can, I, can I just ask you one question? I mean, you are, like always, you're completely inconsistent. So you talk about Manning Cemetery as being this crucial, great listed asset, which of course it is. But Cambridge happens to have one and a half thousand listed assets and also has is one of the world's greatest heritage cities. And in 2008, the High Court turned around, and this is fact, and said that the Coton Corridor was the most important location on the edge of Cambridge for, for preserving the historic city. So I think that with respect, some of your plans are outrageous from a heritage point of view. And I think one of the concerns we have actually about the process, if I may, is that every time we ask about that, you always say, that's a political issue. We'll leave that to Francis Burke, or we'll leave it to, um, you know, Lewis Herbert, etc. And the you reality is, is that the reality that is that, sorry, the, the Coton, okay, if you take the Coton, yeah, if you take, for example, no, but hang on, if you, if you take, for example, the Coton Orchard, as an example, which is what I think Helen is trying to avoid, <coughs> actually, you're desecrating, uh, you're starting a process of desecrating Coton, which is actually a key part of the heritage city of the Cambridges. So you must think harder. I'm not saying that the solution I've come up with is the final solution, but you must think a lot harder about mitigation. And by mitigation, it's not planting a couple of Christmas trees and saying that that's it. It's actually trying to avoid harming Coton. <coughs> Yeah, the, the first important part about an environmental impact assessment is understanding the scope of the impacts you're likely to trigger. And once a strategic decision is made by the board as to which do they want to go south, down the central to the north has been made, then that level of determination can begin. To do that um, on all of these would be an extremely onerous and costly and timely thing. The reason I cited the cemetery with its 8,000 war graves is because that's along the route that the gentleman to my left was pointing to. So it was a specific reference to that alignment is given. So, so okay. we will not be able to get there more easily if there's more buses there from the centre of Cambridge? I think much of it is to do with how people who exist to get access off that road to and from, and not including Cambridge Road itself, so how that would be achieved without a loss of their property that would make it complete loss effective. Well, it would also have the advantage, though, wouldn't it, that all buses could use this new busway, not just rapid transport buses. I mean, you, you, you have all the buses down Manningley Road would be able to jump on the new infrastructure. I mean, as, uh, in my Coton Parish Council hat on, I would like to um, talk in favour of this motion because, you know, if the main problems are with it that you can't turn right from the, um, you know, the half a dozen or so properties on the hill, and that we would need traffic lights at the Coton Turn, and we'd be taking the road to the hedge, not, you know, as far as I could see, it wasn't anybody's gardens anyway. Um, and then you'd either be going over a bridge with shoulders on it and save 50 to 60 million pounds on the scheme, or you would be able to turn off just before the bridge and then go over West into, can I just finish, into Charles yeah, sure, Babbage, right. and I would have thought they, most people living west of Cambridge would think that was a great deal, quite frankly. Just on point about Chrissy, sorry, The point about the bridge going over the, the going over the existing bridge and saving 50 million pounds is just it is inaccurate. You know, the estimated cost for the, the bridge that we're proposing is nowhere near 50 or 60 million pounds, and as we said in our presentation, the point here is, is that you've got a huge amount of congestion on Maddingley Road as you come off the M11, vehicles turning right, going into the park and ride. So the point there is, is that, again, going back to my earlier point, that you know, you're breaking eggs in order to basically put vehicles into a bottleneck, and that isn't going to achieve very much in the long term. So, so you know, at the very least, I think you have to recognise that if, if that proposal was going to be um, reasonable, it would still require a new bridge, and the kind of bridge that you're showing isn't going to be any cheaper than, than the bridge that we're um, proposing could even be more expensive because it's actually going to be a lot longer because it's a skewed bridge going like that whereas ours is going straight across and they're a lot more difficult to build so just from the point of accuracy i do think uh, i wanted just to make that point um, yeah, i'm just going to take one more and then we're going to uh, vote on whether we uh, on this motion and 
lady down the middle there who wanted to speak. It was mainly in answer to the two, um, the two points arguing against this scheme. That Can you said, stand up, please? Thank you. Um, that said there would be. My name is Amanda Fuller. Um, um, firstly, to say I think this scheme is a lot more sensible than the ones put forward by the City Deal. Although I would personally like to go even further and see the A428 actually used as the corridor. We keep talking about the A428 transport corridor and then we're talking about routes down the A1303, which doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, anyway, to go back to the point, you said that if this route went ahead, we'd have a more urban environment, and I don't see how it would be any more urban than putting masses of concrete across all the fields just to the north of Coton. Um, and also that it would, um, it would be far worse segregation for traffic coming out of Coton on the Cambridge Road but under the route that's currently proposed, there's a busway going across just next to the garden centre anyway, so you wouldn't be able to get out that way very easily at all. So in, in terms of the, uh, some of the, the points you were using to argue against this scheme, I don't think they're very valid. Okay, can we vote on this please? The LLF believes that there is sufficient width for a high quality busway and cycle facility along alongside Manningly Rise um, from the A428 to A1303 junction to the M11 junction and requests that the, city, the Greater City Deal Board explore this option in more detail. All those for? I think what's going to happen is they kind of will become a composite. Right, um, we're going to speed up for the rest of it, folks. Um, the conflict of interest of the University of Cambridge, I would like to invite Stephen Coates, chair of the Save the West Westfields campaign, to speak. Thank you very much. Um, I was going to talk for a while, but I'll, I'll keep it really brief. Because I think actually the, the issues are simple. Which is, um, I know the officers said earlier that uh, the university is a non-voting member on the uh, City Deal Board. However, uh, they have huge influence. And in December, for example, they put uh, a response which actually said that they really didn't want the Manningley Road option, they didn't want the um, Northern option. And guess what, surprise, surprise, we've got the Southern route. There is a, another major problem, which I talked to about earlier, which is the fact that they are challenging the local plan at the moment very vigorously. Um, there's a university and a bunch of colleges to the south, and then St. John's who happen to be Curiously enough, at the stakeholder meeting that was held on Thursday night, uh, are also trying to get 100 acres or so uh, developed on uh, Grange Farm. So, uh, and then of course, uh, Coton has its own particular set of issues. So just to cut to the chase, um, what's at stake here are billions of pounds. You've got the West Cambridge site, which can have 10,000 people, construction cost billions. You've got 500 acres between the Barton Road uh, and Manningley Road, all of which could one day be urbanized. So I think it's, it's actually legally correct to say that there are billions of pounds that can be made out of this land. And I find it deeply troubling that you have uh, uh, a landowner who has a vast financial incentive, also in a position to make a decision. And I could, I would actually argue uh, that even the selection of catchment area could help them because hypothetically, I mean, you've seen what's happened in the sporting village, how the Duke of Westminster, of course, he's no longer with us, but had an application for um, a land outside the local plan. And I think actually, um, I think everybody, including Lewis Herbert, when he spoke to us in Newnham the other night, recognizes that, you know, the university and colleges could just come out of the woods with a big planning application. And I actually think the 
So in here, for example, this is a Cambridge News article which came out, um, I think it was in sort of 1st of February, so 26th of February or something um, last year. But basically, that shows you a busway flying through the West Fields, which almost exactly mir mirrors some of the options that the officers have come up with. So my, my, what I'd like us to vote on is for a really uh, a procedure to put in place for the university to be properly removed from the decision-making process, not on the whole of the city, the other have a right to be there, but given the conflict on this particular one, and also to echo uh, Bridget's point, uh, I would like to have the Westfields taken out of the catchment area and also the code of launch and various other places like that because it's the only way to say um, you know, you're not, you've got no incentive to force a road through there because I think we all accept that if a road goes through, it will lead to development. Thank you. Um, have, have any members of the public got any comments on this? Just to say that the university is a non-voting member of the board and therefore to talk about it making decisions is misleading. Well, actually, can I be precise because I've actually looked at the, the, the legality of this. And it's a bit more complicated than that because there is a memorandum of understanding which states that the City Hill Board is legally obliged to take into account the university's views. And actually, I think the university's document that they produced in uh, December was incredibly influential and they even, uh, and quite surprising. I mean, they even talked, for example, about how they were concerned about their cows in Manningley. And look, I went to Cambridge, my dad was at Cambridge. My son's starting Cambridge tomorrow. So lots of people here love Cambridge. But the reality is, is that the property people, and I don't want to defame them, but the property people do not seem to give a monkeys about local residents. And I think that, it, you know, I think there has to be a procedure. We keep asking the city deal, what, uh, how do you manage this conflict? And at the moment, there's no evidence of management. So we look, you know, I don't think we have all the answers, but we're looking for some type of evidence so that this will be taken seriously. Bridget. Okay. There, is, there is an expectation uh, with the board that decision making is consensual and you will note that there's been four resignations out of five from the board which obviously you know I think one could assume shows that it hasn't actually been that easy to get consensual <coughs> decisions there. Um, and even though the university don't have a vote you know, I am absolutely sure that if they objected strongly to something, that you know, it would be something that got debated at length. So I think there is a problem here, um, and you know, and Rod has already highlighted the issue about what happens if we landlock areas of land with busways, and I spoke about it at the last LLF, and it's a real risk that here, and you know, by running busways through the green belt. You do cut off these areas of land which will be virtually impossible for us to then say no to development to because they will be little parceled up bits of land, you know, difficult to access for anything else with a sustainable um, travel route there as well. So it is a, it is a real issue and I, I agree that I think, you know, one would hope that the representatives of the university manage to distance themselves from that but I think there is an issue here that they do stand to make ever such a lot of money if we do landlock bits of their, their land in this way. Thank you. Well, very fortunately, we're in a free country and everybody is entitled, everybody here and the university is entitled to make an opinion, provided you know that they have an interest. And if it's uh, no doubt that if they're making an opinion, they make their interests known, then it's quite legal. Uh, and you cannot, you, you must not, stop anyone making their opinion known. That is the whole basis of this country. Does anyone have anything to add? So, can I just make a point? That's a very good point. I mean, it's a point that I would also support. But also, there's a governance process. And in, in the city council, in South Cams, if there was a conflict of interest, the party would put their hand up and say, it's a conflict of interest, and I would step out of the decision-making process, or even the they're debate. Then they've got a vote. Well, sorry, even the debate, because that's typically what happens on a planning matter. No, in, it isn't. Sorry, sorry. That's, that's not what, true. In, I'm on the funny. Yeah. Well, that's what happens in Cambridge City anyway, right? Perhaps we have a different governance structure, but that's what happens yeah. in Cambridge City. You're entitled so, to make your opinion known, and then you, as long as you declare 
that you have an interest, you're entitled to make your opinion. Well, my position is that in the Cambridge city, what happens typically is someone would step out from that debate. And I think from the, government structure, yeah. from the governance structure of the city deal, the integrity of the city deal is at risk, where one of the key stakeholders who is, as clearly can be seen, going to benefit financially, materially, from certain routes, does not step out of that debate. Does not say, actually, this is a debate I should not participate in. Not, it's not voting, it's not even participating in. That's where I, I think we should be. And I think that is that point should be made very clearly to those politicians who sit on the city deal board there are a number of politicians who can vote and it should be made clear to the chair and the deputy chair that we do not believe that the position of the university is a, is a credible one in relation to participation on discussions on this route okay can, can i just say, answer your point in two seconds i think the very fact that the university are using the bus route as part of the local plan appeal, and they're talking about the bus route as if it's a done deal, I personally I find extremely troubling because um, that's a sign. I mean, you, if you're going to court on this, if we go to judicial review, which we may go to judicial review, and I want to stress this, we're all talking about it, and it may come to us because we're not just going to stand idle. The issue here is they're using the bus route to challenge the local plan, and in 2008, the High Court said you're not allowed to build on the West Fields, and we're suddenly facing these. One of the things they've not said is what this bus route is going to look like. It might be 18 metres wide by the time you've got four metre cycleways either side and two metre pedestrians and seven metre of a bus route. We're talking about not just this route, we're talking about the orbital route. So if when the High Court said you can't actually uh, do this, someone said, a few years later, they set up something called the City Deal, and then from Red Meadow Hill, you can see this giant cross cutting across the field. People would be outraged. And to be perfectly frank, um, I, 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 I think, according to one professor of law who's involved with us, it's already, arguably, an abusive process. So we want to push that governance point. I'm not quite sure how we push it, but every, I've been to the City Deal board, I've asked the questions, and they've laughed. One time they even said, yeah, Cambridge has got land all over the place, you know. I mean, you've got a bunch of guys doing billion pounds worth of development, and their response is, we've got land all over the city. It's not good enough. That's my, that's my view, anyway. Well, uh, again, I stick my um, coat and hat on here. Um, for me, it was, the, um, it was the consultation response document um, that they issued in the final hour of the final day of the consultation, which, to summarise, basically said we don't want the central route because we have uh, we own land down it and you're not having any um, and we don't want the northern route because legitimately we do um, we do studies in in the um, the, the SSSI would um, but also there were comments about you know the university farm and you know agriculture and you know indeed as Stephen alludes to the cows um, and it, you know then the, the local people think, well, that, you know, it, you know it, suddenly here we have the southern route, despite everybody else, it seems, or the vast majority of people saying, no, we don't want that southern route, but hey-ho, we've got it. And why have we got it? Um, well, that might be because of the university submission. And um, I think just you know, to, um, to attempt to restore the faith of the general public in the process, um, we have to support this motion. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, say the opposite to this. I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's the role of the LLF to be no. deciding this. It's about the governance of the city deal, and, and it's, it's up to, um, there's, there's lots of processes, and it's up to us perhaps to scrutinise, or for the city deal members to scrutinise, but it's really not the role of the LLF to be discussing this. And we've only had all these resolutions sprung, well, not sprung, but we've only known them for less than 24 hours. It's, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable um, talking about these very complex uh, governance issues. And, and the Cambridge and University, they're all over the place. We have fantastic planning officers at county and city level. We have good systems. And uh, I think focusing on this is not the right thing to do. So I would be um, um, objecting to this um, resolution. Robin Pally. 
has written the resolution is meaningless because, as we've heard from, from John, the university is not part of making the decision anyway, so it can't remove itself from something it's not part of. So you'd need to change the wording of it. So but you're asking the, the university to remove itself from the debate leading up to the decision. Well, let's change it. Let's, let's change it. Yeah, you can't. Well, that, uh, what, what we're being asked to vote on at the moment, as on the board, no, well, that. Let's change it. Let's change okay. it. I, I think you've got a good point. Let's change it. To remove itself from the debate. Um, it's just as I said. They're entitled to an opinion. It's not a bar. Well, okay. Well, what, 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 maybe we should actually. Just as anybody here is entitled to. So, so let me ask you another way. How do we get public confidence that there? I mean, do we have to? I mean, do we ask for freedom of information? I mean, how do we get public confidence that this process is not being, frankly? You know, done in such a way that it gives an unfair advantage to a, bond, a huge landowner. Whatever you say, you love Newnham, you love, uh, we, you know, you love Westfield. When you wake up and you see 3,000 houses built there and you've lost that countryside, then we'll have the conversation because that's what will make up. And it's highly related to transport. I think Robert can tell that. Anthony Carpen, so I'm the cameraman here. Um, I turned up to one of the first meetings of the Great Cambridge City Field Board and I asked this very question to the Cambridge University representative. I basically said, now that he's on the Great Cambridge City Deal Board, can members of the public publicly cross-examine the representatives of Cambridge University and their colleges for the purposes of business to do with the Great Cambridge City Deal, of which I would assume this planning application is very much one of them, and Paul Thien couldn't say no. So I think it was actually, um, it was Professor Jeremy Saunders who's now no longer on the, the board, um, but I recorded it on camera, so if you want to see his full remarks, they're there on my YouTube channel. So could we say something like the, um, the LLF um, is concerned that the university may be able to you know, have undue influence on routes um, either close to or on their own land holdings. And just, just say we are concerned. Well, I wouldn't even necessarily say undue influence. I think we are concerned that there has been inadequate uh, scrutiny of how the university is affected. To, I think there's a simple wording. The simple wording is... Um, the, the, the LLF is concerned that there has been insufficient scrutiny about the university's involvement in the selection of routes because they are also promoting land development. I think that's all we need to say. It's, fine. it's very simple, because that's the truth. They're promoting land development and they're also choosing routes. So let's keep it simple. And let's just ask as a general question and keep pursuing it because we can't just give up. I don't think the university are choosing the routes any more than any of us. I think it's the officers who come not, up with the routes, the case, subject to the consultation. Sorry. So if I, may, if I may, I was there on Thursday night at the stakeholder meeting, and Sir John said, <coughs> you were there, I mean, the officers are right here, so they can speak up, but they've already had a meeting with St John's Grange Farm. Now, when I, you know, the, the Grange Farm, they've had these meetings, you know, all during the hiatus between, let's be frank about this, during the hiatus between when the process ended in January 2016 and now, they've had endless discussions about how the, you know, the West Cambridge site could be actually used for the purpose of the bus. It's even being disclosed because that was something that was sort of mentioned. So I think we've got to deal with facts. And I think the fact is that they are, you know, and they're also talking, by the way, about access for the, this 10,000 person development, which is a small detail that they're working on. So they are, they are at the table and they've got their feet under the table, so you're not being accurate, I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to go one last um, point. That chat then. Crowley Farm. In fact, last year, St John served us notice on 50 acres on Whitwell Way. Their intention is to put 100 houses on there. We've been told that we may plant a line of trees halfway across the, f the field to divide our farm. We rent about 60, 70 acres from them. But last year, they actually came to see us to tell us that their intention was to put 100 houses, coincidentally, in the gap that's left, the, the, the piece of land that's left, once you slice 
Maddingley Hill in half. They came to see us. Purely coincidental. Purely coincidental. <laughs> Okay, so um, the, the resolution we are going for um, is it that the LLF is concerned that the university may have undue influence in decisions made about their land? No, I think we said the LLF is, uh, I think I've got one, I think it says the, the, the LLF is concerned that the university is both influencing the root decision and also promoting land to the local inspector. Which would be influenced by the route. Okay. Can I uh, let's go for a vote on that, please? Can I? Can I? And the colleges. I mean, I. The university colleges. colleges. Let's say university. Well, they're different things. But the university is the only one on the board, so the colleges. Oh no! The, the, sorry. If I may, the North Barton Landowning Group is a consortium. Therefore, if one member of the consortium yeah. is on the board, then it's as if they're all on the board. That's the legal. <coughs> Can we vote on this resolution, please? All those in favour? All those against? Ten. Abstaining. One and two abstaining. Okay. Right. Park and ride sites at Manning the Marsh Roundabout. I will invite my vice chair. Very temporarily, Edward. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, congratulations for staying this long, so I'll be very, very brief. Uh, first of all, I, I applaud the parishioners from Manningley who've come here to tell us about what effectively is a huge blight on the property by the proposals for uh, the park and ride at the uh, Round Manningley Mulch Roundabout. Um, Maddingley Parish Council are appalled that this is still being seriously considered. Uh, the university did write in November last year, they were totally opposed. Um, Coton Parish have made it quite clear today what the reality is going to be if there's a park and ride on the hillside there. But I think the simpler way to put it to everybody is if you could try and imagine for one minute uh, a quiet autumn evening and uh, you are anywhere to the south side of Copen looking back towards Bladingly March Roundabout you will just see lights all night every night for good it's going to be a huge car park uh, if we really have any honest feeling of the environment it needs to go somewhere where it isn't stuck on top of a hill we can argue different reasons for the different car parks there, but all of them are bang on top of the hill and will be incredibly obvious. And uh, Maddingley have suggested a more practical route would be at Scotland Farm Dry Drayton, where it links with an on-off route on the A428. So I would like to propose that the three sites that the Maddingley March Roundabout are abandoned and a more sensible approach is taken to put it at the Scotland Farm roundabout. And secondly, a little bit more thought to where else on the edge of Cambridge Park and Ride sites could be put, possibly certain <coughs> interchange, possibly at Bar Hill. Thank you. Um, there is an alternative revolution on this one, which is um, that the A428 LLF supports a site, uh, site two being further investigated. Um, this is on the basis that it's, it's thought that sites one and three are much more intrusive on the communities of Coton and Maddingley, and site two sits on top of the hill. Um, and so site two should be further investigated as a new park and ride facility um, and requires high quality Park and cycle facilities which allow bikes to be stored securely overnight. So we have to decide whether we, we, we think the whole thing is better at Scotland Farm or whether we can compromise on the, on the route um, that's least damaging for people because it seems we are the only people that really do seem to consider that. I think, I think we have to do 
phone, actually. <coughs> right. You know, we need, we need the fall back. So, you know, by all means, promote um, what uh, Ed was rec recommending. But, you know, we need, a, we need a fall back in case that is rejected out of hand. And, you know, we, so we, they need to know that um, we strongly reject one and three as sites. And that two, you know, if we can't have it at Scotland Farm, then two is the only one that you know, is the least damaging option. I think it'd be a mistake not to do both. Because this is a picture of the, of the um, site three, which is the favoured option. So, and the park and ride will come two thirds of the way down that field. And that's the beginning of the village. And then, so, it w I mean, this will be hugely intrusive. And another question is how on earth would that be screened? Because that hill does fall 25 meters. Um, so you would need at the bottom, uh, 50 foot trees, <laughs> I mean, how are you going to possibly screen that um, to, the, to the houses below? And it's all the houses, they go off now to the left, that's the beginning of the village. So, you know, our, uh, like certainly Coton Parish Council would think, I mean, if you can't find a, a better field than that, then it's a poor show, really. Penny. Um, can I ask, is there still a park and ride site towards the, the Campbell end? Is, is there another park and ride site, or are we just looking, or is it the only one that's in the perimeter? There's one single one. Because the economic arguments, are, I think it's called abstraction, that you know, the closer you have a, a car park right up to town, the less the rural bus service is available. So to me it seems central that you do put the park right further out, so whether it's the Scotland Farm or, or even the Campbell one. But so I support the I think this site, but there is, there, there's a lot more arguments than just the environmental, and for once I'm actually arguing about the economic um, benefits as well. But um, it, it's, a, it's very interesting technically why and where people use park <coughs> Can I ask um, you, uh, the chap in green, please, because you did want to talk about this. Yeah. No, no, we're talking about it now, aren't we? Thank you, thank you. Um, okay. We've obviously just touched on it, and you were quite right to say that, look, uh, be patient, and then we'll talk about this. Um, we are very concerned, uh, all of us here, about different aspects of all these proposals. We all accept, uh, I do accept, that obviously traffic uh, volumes increase, um, numbers of cars, congestion, uh, there is a need to actually improve traffic flow. We're told that Cambon is going to expand and uh, we expect even more traffic, more cars to travel from Cambon to Cambridge. Where in Cambridge, we're not quite sure. Uh, some of the, uh, the discussion tonight suggested that it's all going to go down to Adams Road. Where are all these people going to go when they um, um, get off the buses at Adams Road? It seems to me that employment hubs are around uh, the Science Park, the biomedical campus. These are all in the periphery of the city. Um, and there are... This proposal about the, uh, the uh, new park and ride to be sited at Crome Lee, uh, the fields around Crome Lee Farm, uh, it doesn't make any sense in terms of logic at all whatsoever. There's going to be increased traffic from Camborne. You expect um, car numbers and travelling numbers to increase. And you, you're going to allow them to arrive at Maddingley Road and then to have to somehow turn right into this new park and ride. Already, we said that there's going to be problems in this last scheme about... Uh, widening the Maddingley Road, how are they going, how the, the, the property owners and the residents in those properties, how are they going to turn into their driveways? How is all this extra traffic in the morning rush hour going to actually turn right across the opposing traffic and go into the park and ride? It does not make any sense. Thank you. We've Thank mentioned, you. So, sorry, just very quickly, I'll be very seconds, quick. Right, Scotland Farm. There it is, it's on the A428. It is, there's loads of land, it is not on a hill, uh, it's on the roundabout, already there, they can come off the roundabout, you intercept them well before they get into this bottleneck here, and they, then the route into the, uh, into the employment hubs can actually go down the A428, some of it, some of it can come on, on, on a new busway somewhere, but this 
To put the new park and ride here, it makes absolutely no sense in terms of logic. Okay. Perhaps, you. perhaps we can have some explanation. Can I have your name, please? Oh, I thought you might ask that. Uh, you might like to call me Bill. My surname is Dr. Kalogirakis, if you like. <laughs> you asked for it. Let's vote on the idea that we, or the resolution, that we strongly <coughs> reject um, sites one and three. Um, uh, and if we, um, if we can't have Scotland Farm, which is our favourite option, then site <coughs> two is least damaging. In favour, please. Anybody against? One. Um, we've got two items left on the agenda. I'll tell you what they are, just in case anybody wants to go. <laughs> so we've got the displacement of traffic due to tackling Cambridge congestion proposals, and we've got the city sector access study and interface with the A428 scheme. So can I ask Robin Pellew to talk about the displacement of traffic due to <coughs> tackling Cambridge congestion proposals, please? <coughs> Um, I'm sure everybody in the room is aware of the fact that the city deal at the moment is um, uh, proposing a package of measures to try and alleviate congestion city-wide. Um, there is, it's not a public consultation, it is uh, an engagement process and there is a significant difference between the two in that this engagement process doesn't give you the option of looking at an alternative package like a congestion charge or something different. This is the package, it is the fine tuning of it. Um, the package includes these control points which at peak hours will close certain main commuting roads, um, including on the west side of Cambridge, both the Grange Road and the Backs, uh, Queen's Road. Um, the consequence of this, which we're concerned, Cambridge PPF is primary concerned about, is going to be displacement of traffic. Um, because what is likely to happen is that drivers will have to find an alternative route either to bypass the control point or indeed on the outer ring roads to be able to select a route into the city to get to their destination that doesn't take them past the control point. So vehicles are going to be, drivers are going to be using more the main outer ring roads like the motorway and the A14 in order to find the best route to get into the city. And <clears throat> those already are con heavily congested during the, the peak hours. They will become more congested and then they're going to get the spin-off with rat runs through the villages. So the point which we want to make in our resolution is to ask um, the City Deal and the County Council what measures they're proposing to take to mitigate the displacement effect of traffic, um, trying to find alternative routes, and secondly, to ensure that when it comes on this 18-month trial period under which these uh, control points are being introduced, when it comes to actually monitoring their effectiveness, the monitoring is sufficiently sensitive and wide scale enough to be able to pick up the impacts, not just around the control points, but throughout the city, including on the outer ring roads and indeed in the surrounding villages. So that is basically what we're asking for in this resolution. I think we have to accept, whether we like it or not, and we, we personally don't, but this 18 month trial period is going to go ahead. So we've got to make damn certain that there is adequate monitoring before and after, not just of traffic flows and journey times, but of the actual impact upon people's lives, upon quality of life, and particularly the displacement effects that this will have 
and I think that West Cambridge is likely to see significant displacement, including in the villages, and we need to actually ensure that that is covered in the, uh, in the monitoring programme. Thank you. Can I just save time and say it will be? Yes. <laughs> So we're monitoring this for 18 months, but we're not doing anything about it. So for 18 well, months, for 18, we could have gridlock. Well, for, 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 for 18, it's a, under the traffic regulation order. It is an 18-month trial period at the end of which presumably a decision is made as to whether it works or not. We hope it does. Uh, we hope it meets its 50% traffic reduction target. But the, the monitoring must include not just the 15% traffic reduction, it's got to be a lot more sophisticated because we're playing here with people's lives, their commuter routes, uh, residential streets turned into rat, uh, rat runs, and so on. So the, the monitoring has got to go beyond just traffic flows and, and bus journey times. Okay, do we largely agree, everybody, and shall we vote? I, I'd like to ask a question, please. Okay. Um, is, it, is the intention that the authorities will produce alternative routes before this uh, trial takes place? And the suggested alternative routes? Question. Well, I think that's well, probably that's more the bottom one than me. I'm going to the engagement exercise going on about this right now. I don't have the details with me. It's all on the website. I was at one last week. I'll be at another one later this week. That's probably the proper place to get into detailed questions about this. Just to clarify one point, proposed to do it under an experimental traffic regulation order process. That's a maximum of 18 months. If no decision is made, it lapses and it just gets taken away. There's a six month period at the beginning for objections and then up, up to a year for making a decision. The decision may be made quicker, it may not be. That depends on what, what emerges. In terms of mitigating the effects on the temporary experimental period, you'll appreciate we wouldn't want to be doing huge amounts of work to mitigate something that might be temporary, but that is something that could emerge during the process from actually see what happens. And it is quite, you know, we'll, we'll be perfectly honest, it is quite difficult to forecast. The 15% is probably a midpoint of what could be quite a broad range in terms of the traffic reduction effect, hence doing it as an experiment, an ideal experiment. So, so, it's, so it's not to plan beforehand and tell people, it's sufficient to see and see what happens. No, no, no. The, 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 the closure points are clearly will, will be clearly set out. They're, they're indicative at the moment. They're not specific closure points just yet. That's part of the engagement exercise. There'll be some adjustment of those, I suspect, coming out of, of what's being discussed. Um, there'll be very strong messages about using alternatives about how the buses will get better. The stagecoach is going to put more buses on, part of this. Um, there'll be very strong messages to employers about encouraging people to. Uh, use alternative modes of transport and work with them through travel planning. There'll be lots of messages about people using alternatives. But in terms of people finding alternative routes, we will leave that up to them. So, yeah, so, so thank you. Okay, thank you. And the answer is, I think, that <clears throat> it's going to be a case of suck it and see. And they're going to close these roads on whatever it is, 1st of October 2017, and then they're going to see what happens. <laughs> and the answer is going to be entirely chaotic. An example of chaos theory, I suspect. One last point. That information is on the website. Um, the only health warning I would give, as I say, the key element is forecasting how much people will actually change to a different mode of transport. We know from the core scheme in the centre of Cambridge, there was a 15% reduction in car traffic as a result of that. So we've based it around that. It could be more than that. It could be less than that. That's the hard bit to accurately forecast. We know there'll be a change. How much? But the modelling on that 15% is on the website now. Can I, can I just ask you more, we'll to be absolutely clear? Manningley has four roads in and four roads out of the village that all used as rat runs. Will they all four be monitored during this trial? And two weeks before it starts. We, we haven't yet sat down and identified what the monitoring points will be, but to be extent, as extensive as the can I register a firm okay. request. Um, we get so Got much that. traffic trying to cut through that. Thank you. Right, I have just thing. one quick question. Will there be an incentive for people to move back to the park and rides? Are you, are, are you going to change the economic nature of the park and rides to incentivise people to get out? Because that's what you need. You need a carrot to. In you know, it's not, it's not good just putting up the stick. I think we're fairly on top of it here. 
Well, it's okay. a question, I mean, it's a question which is very valid. Okay, so if, if I made an opportunity to do something like that, and I'm using my words carefully, comes with the workplace parking levy, which actually creates the revenue to do that. The only reason that challenge is on is the county council needs the money. So the workplace levy is not going to come in That's any time soon. Yeah. Okay, can we vote on this now, please? A, sorry, could I ask a question in context, actually, Bob? Um, what is the fine for actually transgressing the point? It would be uh, technically there will be bus gates, control for automatic number plate recognition cameras, and it'll be a traffic offence with a sixty pound penalty charge notice. Sixty. Yeah. Okay, we're going to vote on this now. All those in favour? <laughs> All those against? None. So how many was that? <laughs> Did anybody count? Yeah, nobody was counting. Yeah, again, 14. Hands up. 14. Okay. 15. 15. Right, we have one, um, one more thing. We, we want to be out of here after 10. Okay. So can I invite Penny Heath, North Newnham Residents Association? impacts on all the people who actually live in Newnham. So this isn't about Copeland, but it's about the, the West Cambridge. And um, w one of the principles is that the city centre access study, which Rob has just referred to, we, we, I think everyone likes to see the results of it uh, of the before rather than um, the parallel results. Uh, what this this um, uh, consultation, or um, uh, what is the word using at the moment? It's just a, um, uh, engagement. Um, but it's going to turn into a consultation, but we've got to have those results. Um, and obviously there's huge impacts of social, environment, um, and economic, and um, there's a real request from our end of town that we just want the vision of the whole um, scheme, the whole city, how's it going to look, and also we're really interested in alternatives. Within scope, there's been some, but without scope. Um, the ones outside the scope, I know um, there's some forms here, but the, the Cambridge Connect, uh, we just like to see this come up as maybe another agenda item in an LS, LS meeting. And I should also promote um, Smarter Cambridge Transport. We've got a, a meeting coming up a week time. So, next slide, please. Um, uh, well, the busway, how is it going to link to the city centre? I mean, no one's really talked about that yet. Um, but we believe they're just what we call um, constraints for historic city. They're, they're almost insurmountable. You can't go from the segregated double lane busway to suddenly to some medieval street patterns. Um, and, and of course, one of Cambridge's USPs, its unique points, is that they're, they're a very narrow bridges, and they're also full already with uh, walkers and cyclists, and uh, you have to have you know a pleasant route and sort of be safe enough. So, I think we'd like data on actual um, movement of um, uh, pedestrians, which includes tourists, and students, um, as well as, as cars. Um, we just need to know how these bridges are going to work and what, what's going to happen. Um, and even, the, well, we've talked about the West Cambridge site, but that has just got an outline planning application for 14,000 people working there, and that doesn't include students. And I believe I think 40% will be coming from the city centre. So there's these thousands of people crossing these narrow bridges, and um, the idea of creating you know, bus lanes or cycle routes seems um, difficult. And then, um, again, because of the historic city, I, mean, I think in the reports we hear about mitigation and avoiding but we'd very much like to see the principles of protect and enhance and, and actually sort of make it more beautiful. We want something positive out of this. Um, you know, constructive conservation is you enhance, you make things better. Mitigation is a, is a, is a sort of shabby word, really. <coughs> not, not good enough for Cambridge. Um, and then, of course, Grange Road and Queen's Road, I mean, we just don't know what it's going to look like. But the suggestion is going to look like a bus depot with gantries, and um, we've, re we've really got to look after our city. So, next slide. And again, in the Newnham, the, the, um, the, the, the um, uh, what are you call them, control points, um, these, um, uh, which uh, Rob has just been talking about, so I, we call them Checkpoint Charlie. And um, what, you know, the, the implications, um, so I can't see my slide, I, I got a, um, I just 
wrote to our re local residents, and I think one of the best summing up the importance of all allowing the whole of Union Newton to function as a living, connected community. We're feeling very threatened by being cut off. You can't go to the shops. Um, Newnham has a parish church, butcher, baker. Um, it, it'd be really difficult. Um, we're not allowed to mention um, parents and car drivers because you know sometimes parents seem to be evil people carrying children. Around, but actually, people do drive children to school. And we've got the local economy and shops and of course sports facilities, the colleges. So lots to sort out. Um, next slide. And then just going back to the vision thing, I think one of the things we a lot of people feel this need for what's it going to look like. And I put these two slides up. Uh, one is um, the, the Greater City of Transport Vision, which is good to have visualisation. But I'm just reminding people, down at the bottom right corner, this is when the Cambridge phenomenon was being discussed and how we're going to deal with growth and high tech. Um, 2009, this very nice, so what I call holistic view, showing the city, you've got this visual clarity. So you've got, um, we don't talk about, um, 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 anyway, radial routes, they're a historic approach road, they've all got character and distinctiveness, just like you feel about Coton Village. We feel like that about our suburban streets. It's very important. But we like the idea of protecting landmarks, we're preserving the separate identities of Nexus villages, green figures into historic core. And I think this is what the City Deal needs. Unfortunately, the City Deal Agreement, which you should all read, um, and that's the, what we've been let down by. It's not um, the officers coming up with ideas, it's actually the politicians signed up to one of the dullest, most philistine documents you can imagine. And we're, we're paying for it. They're having to work in these very different parameters where everything's driven by economic success. Um, but you've got to add the environmental quality of life as well. Next one, please. Um, so, I said, to summarise, we would like to see, um, what I was quoting from that form about these alternative options, you know, we'd like the executive board to consider another option or preferred option. We just want something a bit more flexible, a bit more imaginative, but um, it's, it's obviously difficult, but I think it's in there, in the proposal, that there is an alternative. Um, the design guide brief is not yet adopted. It's referred to as being adopted, but it's not. And I think the LLF should be invited to work with that more closely. Um, I think in consultations, um, I think the LLF as a working group should be actually invited to actually write the questions that the officers have got to ask, because we know more how these things should be placed, but I think we get fed up asking questions like, do you like ice cream? Do you like, would you prefer better transport? You know, we've got to get something more, um, more, more sensible. And um, finally, transport policies. I'm the sort of person who likes reading policy documents, and there are positives in there, which I think the city deal is missing out on. Um, so can I have the last slide? Um, for example, the, 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 I think it's, I can't do it all, the South Cambridgeshire Transport Strategy, da, da, da. You know, one of the term in there, I can't read because of this, that microphone. The, can you, someone else, can you read? Uh, it's on the screen. Oh, no, thank you, yeah. Okay, here we go. In terms of built natural heritage, the city of Cambridge and South Cambridgeshire are both regarded as distinct and desirable locations that are required to be preserved and protected to keep the quality of life high. Goes on a bit more. It is therefore vital that the impact on the built and natural environment from transport is kept to a minimum, with measures looking to improve on the current situation wherever possible. And that's in our plan, it's on our local plan, and that's what we're working to. So I'm all for sort of being positive about things, but I just would request that the city deal papers produce that <coughs> giving of their statements rather than just the economic benefits. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Um, just a final piece of business before we all go, we'd like to thank um, Edward for being vi uh, Vice Chair for the first two meetings of the LLF and um, we'd like to vote in another Chair, uh, another Vice Chair going forward, so... Sorry, um, I have a question before you finish. Um, just in the title of, of the discussions today, I assumed there would be something around the Western Orbital. No, that's the next meeting. Oh, okay. Can I just have um, uh, any? Um, would someone like to suggest somebody for all the um, for the vice chair, please? Any? Bridget. Everybody in favour of Bridget? Thank you, Bridget. Good.